Be seated. Morning, everyone. Happy to be in the service of the Lord this morning. Back again. Um, didn't know where we'd get back or not, but the uh, Lord provided a way, and we return for the service today. Now we're expecting great times today, this morning in the Sunday school lesson in the Word, and tonight will be healing services again with communion service following it. And now we have a, a dedication of baby, I believe the brother Neville was just telling me that someone had their baby to be dedicated, and if they'll bring the baby at this time, uh, then, and a brother will remain, or some of them at the organ or piano one, and then to bring the baby up, we'll have a dedicational service, so we get right in quickly as we can to the Word, because we like to, to uh, lay to the Word. That's, that's the main thing. Give our time exactly to the Word of the Lord. So we are very... Thankful for the opportunity to meet with you all here today and to and this this service. I must have been mistaken. That's all right, sister. I, I, I thought there was maybe just a mistake. Okay. Now, um, uh, thank you very much. It's the same. Maybe it's, I think it's come through somebody else through somebody else, and it made it kind of a, a difficult. Now, everybody feeling good? Amen. 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 Speak to God. Now, I'm with them. Oh, yes, uh, here's the little pause. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll let you come, Elder. Well, what two fine little girls, little brown eyed girls, huh? That tree. What's her name? What's her name? Jenny. Jennifer Lee. What's her name? Surat. Where are you from, sister? Versailles, Illinois. How nice. How nice. In the Bible, now usually they, they have such as a baptizing of children. We don't believe in baptizing children because they have sinned not yet because they're too young. But we believe in dedicating children to the Lord. Now the elder and I will lay hands upon the little baby. Jennifer. 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 Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, as this morning we bring this little girl called Jennifer to thee, the mother and loved ones has brought her from a long way to be dedicated to the Lord. We know that you laid your hands up on such little ones in your days and, and said, Suffer, little children, to come to me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. Now we give her to you for a life of service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What's the other little girl? Connie Lynn. Connie Lynn. All right, little Connie. You let me do it kind of small. Or you're scared. Oh, I'm afraid that won't work. Or right, let us bow our heads. Lord Jesus, the mother brings this little Connie to us this morning. In dedicational service to the Almighty, you gave her this child to raise, and she's bringing it to you with the little sister. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll be merciful. Bless the family. Bless the little girl as we lay hands upon her. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give her to you for a life of service. Amen. God bless you and your little children. Wow, we got lots of little babies. Huh? <laughs> What's the little boy's name? Charlie. 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 Joe Watson. Joe Lee Watson. What a fine boy. Great big blue eyes. Uh, where are you all from? From Georgia. I thought she was in the South. I didn't know. Oh, Georgia. Oh, my. Ah, this is a fine little Georgia boy, then, huh? All right, sir. Yes, sir. That's very fine. He can talk to you, can't you? <laughs> That's our His Heavenly Father. We bring this darling little boy as a mother and father stands here and in regards to their union, you have given them this little boy to raise and they're bringing it back to you. What a, a beautiful scene this would be. Like Hannah of old who prayed for a child and, and God gave her the child and she brought it back to the temple of God in dedication. Grant, Lord, that this little boy will be your servant. 
that the father and mother will be blessed and have health and strength to raise it. May it live a long, happy life and be your servant as we commit it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Make him a fine man. Maybe another little prophet like Samuel. Now, here's two fine little boys. My three of them. Well, that's the whole family. What's your name? Michael. And yours is Paul? What fine names? And yours? Deborah. That's really fine. Michael and Paul and Deborah. And what's your name? Helen. Well, that's a mighty fine little family. I'm telling you. You know, when I see little fellows like that, it always takes me back to when I was a little boy. And now, the old saying is, you know, they cramp on your feet and on your heart later. But I don't believe it will be so when we dedicate it to the Lord. We have a responsibility here. And God places this in your hand. Amen. He made a preacher out of you. Uh, I always said about women preachers, you know, but every mother is a preacher. Here's a congregation. <laughs> so raise these little fellows right while dad's working. And you got a responsibility. God bless you both. You've got a fine little family. Our Heavenly Father, we come with little Michael. Look like being the firstborn. And we place our hands upon him in dedication to Jesus Christ. His family brings their little ones because you place this in their their care, and they know that they're insufficient without your help. So they bring their little family to dedicate. Now I give little Michael here to you for a life of service in Jesus Christ's name. Likewise, we lay hands upon little Paul, and we dedicate his life to Jesus Christ for a life of service for the glory of God. Upon little Deborah, we lay hands upon her, Father, in dedication, commemoration of Jesus Christ, who laid his hands upon little children and said, Suffer them to come to me, don't prevent them. May this little girl's life be blessed in the kingdom of God. Bless the father and mother, and may they live long, happy lives to see their children in the service of God. We ask this blessing for the glory of God as we dedicate them. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. Bless you. Bless you for fine little family. <clears throat> well, you know, I think little girls get it's prettier now than you see when I was a little boy. Yeah, it's a what? Great big, pretty eyes. What's your name? Joanna. And your last name is Blair. Joanna Blair. You to look like ain't you, darling? And um, how are you, Joanna? <laughs> a little bit bashful? <laughs> Lovely little thing. That's our Our Heavenly Father, this family of theirs has had this gift to their union, this little Joanna. And we know that the days are evil when Satan's on every hand to be set, especially these little girls. And they know that they're insufficient to, to raise her up right. And they want her raised right to and, and, and be a servant to you. They're raising this little girl to honor you. And now they bring her in dedication to thee. We lay our hands upon her in the name of Jesus Christ as we dedicate little Joanna Blair to the kingdom of God for the glory of God. Amen. Bless you, Brother Blair. Glory be with you. Good morning, sir. What a fine boy this is. Hey, how are you? Well, my, you look better when you turn around this way. You just uh, got a nice, pretty little head and a face to go with it, huh? Daniel Mark. Daniel Mark, and then your last Carter. 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 Daniel Mark, I'm pretty around here, Brother Carter? Uh, Daniel Melzer. Yes, sir. Where are you from? I originally from New York State. New York State, Yankee Rock. Yes. Well, that's a great state. I got some people who live there. My uncle went to Plattsburgh. Oh, I had a lot of fun in New York. <laughs> going up there as my next meeting in New York State. You know, it's going to church there. All right, now his name is Mark, you say? Daniel Mark. Daniel Mark. What a fine little boy. That's our uh, head, Lord, 
Jesus, we bring to you a little Daniel Mark in dedication of his life. It's been given in the hands of the father and mother to raise this little child in the admonition of God. And they know that they're insufficient. So they're bringing it to you, Lord, that you would bless his life. And now, as we know that the day is evil that we live, and we see these little fellows, we just don't know what tomorrow holds. But whatever it is, we trust them into your hands. We lay hands upon uh, this little boy and dedicate his life to you for a life of service to the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Sunday was prayed for last Sunday. Uh, feels the results and feels your heel. Raise your hands and pray for it. Oh, wow. Look at here. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. I've been here somehow. Uh, yes, sir. I had too. I just wanted to <laughs> listen to you. See, something's taking place that I'll tell you about later. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's glorious and wonderful. Hallelujah. And if we, we talk about it. Some other meeting, you know, some time. It's just beginning to take place, and we're so thankful for it. And um, I've been down in Kentucky, as I do each year, going down there. As some of my friends down there, and it ain't all together to squirrel hunt, and you know that. <laughs> so we're just having a glorious time, and we're thankful to the Lord. I got to go now. I got to go home after this meeting, and then um, we're, uh, then I'll be back to again after a while going to New York for a meeting. And if we had a chance to stop over a little bit while we would be glad to have another meeting here at the Tabernacle. And then I got to come back going to Shreveport. And then we go back home and aim to be here through the holidays. The Lord willing, bring the family back. And then, um, and then I want, to, uh, then my meeting comes up in Phoenix in January. It's an annual meeting there for the Christian businessman. And about a week or ten days before that, I'm going to try to to rent that a big the Jesus name people it used to be Brother Garcia, and uh, the Spanish brother there had a wonderful big place there. They just built it. It'll seat several thousand people, brand new, and their congregation is very small. They told me I could rent it any time I wanted to. Instead of just taking a, a panoramic just round through the valley, church to church. I think I'll just concentrate the thing all in one big union meeting, you see, and then yeah. have it there, and then uh, we can rent the temple. We're going now to find out if we can, and then have the Christian Businessmen's Convention. Then until the overseas gets straightened up, we're going to try to set meetings down through the south for January and February and March, yeah. through the Southlands, and then um, then because if we start now and go into Africa, see, this Christmas time. To them it is the fourth of July. See, it's it's rainy and bad. And you can't get in there at that time. So the best time to go in there is later on. And then we want to start if we can in Norway and come down around the world and work in to Africa to end up down in there. The Lord willing. But uh, pray for us now, and we love you. <laughs> you know that. So we're expecting the exceeding abundantly above all that we could do or even think the Lord to do. And we believe right. tonight there will be a great healing service. Amen. We believe there will be a... Uh, yeah. I won't speak but just a little bit because we got communion tonight. And so about uh, 20 or 30 minutes, then we'll have the prayer line. And um, and then immediately after that, we'll have, uh, have the communion. And you're welcome to stay with us. We'd be glad. We don't have uh, a closed communion. It's to every believer. Every believer. And um, before I read the scripture, I wonder if we'd bow our heads just a minute. I'm going to ask a good friend, Brother Lee Vail, if he'll lead us in a word of prayer. That God will bless his word. Brother Vail, will you do that for us? Our Father, we come to you this one more time with just one request. And that is, my God, that you help us to receive the word this morning. Spoken by the 
servant of God that you have sent. Knowing, Lord, that he can say to us, as Paul said, what came the word of God out of your came the word of God to you. We believe this morning, Lord, not exalting any man above his position, but surely we can recognize that the word of God is coming unto us this morning. And I, for one, Lord, and believe all of us want to hear it and receive it. Amen. 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 In such a way, Lord, that it just won't be a knowledge added to us, but it'll be light and power to magnify Jesus Christ, who is our light. May he be our eternal joy. Grant Everything that in his person, the Holy Spirit, be in us and then through us unto a lost and dying world. Grant us this this morning, we pray, Jesus, thy servant, O God, in us. We shall therefore glorify as we have not done so before. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 Now, solemnly, reverently, we approach the word. Now, I wish to read this morning from Exodus, the 12th chapter, and the, beginning with the 12th verse, the 12th and 13th verse inclusive. And listen close now. And then before communion tonight, read the 12th chapter of, of Exodus. The entire chapter. For just the 11th verse here is the getting ready for the journey and the communion before the journey. And we want to approach this very reverently now. Now the 12th verse of the 12th chapter for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. May the Lord bless his holy word. Now, I want to take a text out of there, just one um, little five-lettered word, token. Token. I want to speak on the word or teach the Sunday school lesson on the word of a token. The Bible said here, and the blood shall be a token unto you. And we want to use the word token. Now, we don't know when I watch the clock and when it gets time. Well, these are, I got many, many scriptures wrote down here. So, not knowing that I won't be with you for a while, you know, how do we know this won't be the last time that some of us will ever meet together? Right. So, let's try to approach it just as reverently. I know that it's hard. The Lord's give us a nice morning now to, to, for the service. It's just nice. And let's try to concentrate now on everything that we speak of so that the if there's anything in there that the Lord would want you to know, that it would be given to you. And we don't stand here just to be seen. We never come here just so others could see what clothing we were wearing. Or we, we come here for one thing. As our brother prayed that prayer, we are here for hear the word. Amen. The word coming to us. We want that. Because that's... The only thing that's going to mean anything to us. Anything that's going to be substantial. Anything that's, that's going to help us. And we are a dying people. All human beings are headed towards eternity. And then we got this much time to make our decisions on which way we're going to head. And the road is before us. We can take either side we want to choose. That's the way he put Adam and Eve, and that's the way he puts us. We must remember that no matter what we do or how successful we are in life, 
Without Christ, we totally lost everything. Amen. So if he is, after, if he's all that there is to look forward to, then we'd be most foolish people not to accept it be, and, and cherish it. Not only accept it, but you come to something greater than that. After you've got it, don't take it and lay it on the shelf. Amen. It's to be put into use. Like going to the doctor to get medicine and then set it up on the shelf. If you go to get the medicine, take the medicine. If there's a disease bothering you and this remedy is supposed to help you, you take what he gives you. And just the way he says give it, because sometimes just a few minutes makes a lot of difference in the way you give it. And how do we know? But in this case today, just one moment of your decision might determine your eternal destination. Take it just as he hands it to you. A token. The blood shall be to you a token. Now what is first a token? It's a word that's commonly used among we uh, English speaking people. Especially here in America. A token is uh, really the dictionary says that a token is a sign. It's a sign of a fair price paid. That the, the fair or a, a price, a required price that's been paid. Like a fare on a railroad or a fare on a bus line. You go in and purchase your, your fare and then they give you a token. And that token cannot be spent for nothing else but to that railroad line. And it is a token to the railroad company that you have paid your fare. It's a token. And you can't spend it for nothing else. It doesn't work on any other line. It just works on that line only. And it's a, it's a token. Now, down here that we're speaking of, where we're starting in, is God saying to Israel, the blood of the Lamb is a token for you. Israel's lamb slaying was Jehovah's required token. It must be the blood. God made a token and give it to Israel and no other token will work. See, it cannot be recognized. To the world, it's a bunch of foolishness. But to God, it's the only way the only thing that he requires is that token. It must be there. And you cannot have the token until the fair is paid. Amen. Then you are a possessor of the token, which gives you the, the privilege of a free pass. Ha, ah, see the blood. A pass over you. What a time. That, what a privilege. To know that you pack within him the past. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It's the only thing that he'll recognize. There's nothing else that can take its place. No substitute, no denomination, no nothing else. It takes that. God said that alone will I see. No matter how righteous they was, how good they was. How much education they had, how they dressed, the token was the only thing. When I see the token, I'll pass over you. The blood was a token that the, the requirement of Jehovah had been met, that it had been done. The blood stood for the token. The blood was a token. See, the life that God and said that the day you eat thereof, that day you die, and it had been a substitutionary uh, a life taken for the life of the believer. God, in mercy, uh, accepted a substitute for the life of the defiled person. When his child had defiled himself with sin of disbelieving the word, then God, rich in mercy, made a substitute, and that was something had to die in its place. Nothing else could work. That's why Cain's 
uh, apples and peaches and so forth didn't work. It had to be a lie. It had blood in it. And the life was gone from the sacrifice. And now the blood was a token that God's order had been carried out. Now, what did God require? The life. And the blood showed that there had to be a life gone. So the blood was the token that the life had been given. That something had died, God's requirement, that a life had been given and the blood had been shed and the blood stood for the token that the life was gone. The life of the animal that God had spoke should be taken was the blood stood for the token. See, the, the, the believing worshiper was identified with his sacrifice by the token. I don't wish to stay too long on these little uh, uh, quotations, but which you could take the entire service on one of them. But I want to stop here a, a moment to express that the, the, the believer had to be identified with his sacrifice. The, if it's just the sacrifice and, and made somewhere out there, he'd give it. But he had to be identified in it. Frankly, he had to place his hands on it first to identify himself with his sacrifice. And then the blood was placed to where he could stand under the blood. The blood must be over him. And that was a token that he had identified himself guilty and had proven that an innocent substitute had taken his place. What a beautiful picture of a redeemed thing. Justice had been met. And the requirement of God's holy justice had been met. And God said, now I'll require your life. And then when the, the, the life had sinned, then an innocent substitute took its place. It was a blood beast, not apple, peach. That ought to absolutely make the serpent seed so plain to everybody. Amen. That it was blood and this Blood which could not come out of fruit, come out of an innocent substitute. And the life had gone out to, to, in his place. And the blood was a symbol that the beast had died. And the blood was gone out. And the worshiper applying the blood over himself showed that he was identified in the redemption. Because he has identified himself with the uh, the sacrifice, connected himself to the sacrifice, and the blood stood for the token. How how wonderful. What a picture it is. It's a perfect type of Christ. Just exactly. The believer today standing under the shed blood, identified with the sacrifice. Just as perfect as, as it can be. How that Christ, not not being an animal. You see, the, the animal uh, died, but it was the most innocent thing that we have, I suppose, would be the, the animal, the, the lamb. When God wanted to identify Jesus Christ, he identified him as a lamb. And when he wanted to identify himself, he identified himself as a bird, a dove. And the dove is the most innocent and cleanest of all the bird life. And the, the lamb is the most innocent and pure of all the animal life. So you see, when the Jesus was baptized by John, and the Bible said, and, and he saw the Spirit of God like a dove coming down upon him. Therefore, if it had been a, if it would have been a, a wolf, or if it had been a, any other animal, the, the nature of the dove could not have blended with the nature of the wolf. Neither could the, the nature of the dove blend with any other animal but the lamb. And those two natures came together. Then they could agree with each other. Now do you see predestination? It was a lamb when he come there. <laughs> see, the, it was a lamb when it 
When it was brought, it was a lamb. It was born a lamb. It was raised up a lamb. See? Therefore, that's the only kind of a true spirit that can receive the word. That can receive Christ. Rest of them try. They try to get it and put the spirit of God upon a wolf. See? Anger, ill, mean. It won't stay there. The Holy Spirit just flies right away. It will not do it. What if that dove had come down and instead of it being a lamb there, it would have been some other animal. It would have quickly took its flight and went back. See? But when it found that nature that it could blend into, it just become one. And then the, the, the dove led the lamb. And notice it led the lamb to slaughter. Now the lamb was obedient to the dove. See? No matter where it led it, it was willing to go. I wonder today when God leads us to a, a life of complete surrender and service to him. I wonder if our spirits then sometimes don't rebel. Kind of showing that I wonder if we are a lamb. See? See? A lamb is obedient. A lamb is self-sacrificial. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't take claim its own. You lay it right down, shear the wool off of it. That's the only thing it's got. It never, never says anything about it. It just sacrifices everything it's got. That's a lamb. It gives everything to its, uh, gives everything away. Itself and all it is. And that's the way a real Christian is. It, they're self-sacrifice themselves, caring nothing for this world but giving all they got to God. And now, this was a perfect lamb, Christ was. And then through the shed of this lamb, the natural lamb in Egypt, the blood was applied, and when it was, it stood for a token. Then what would the blood of this lamb stand for? See? The token that we are dead to ourselves and identified with our sacrifice. See? Then the lamb... And the, and the, the blood and the person becomes identified together, the sacrifice and the believer. See, you are identified in your life by your sacrifice. That makes you what you are. Then the blood was a token, our uh, identification. The blood identified that the worshiper had slaying the lamb and accepted the lamb and applied the token to himself that he was not ashamed. He didn't care who saw it. He wanted everybody to see it. And it was placed in such a position that everybody passing by could see that token. See, many people want to be Christians. And they, they, they like to do it secretly. So nobody would would know that they were Christians or the, the associates they run around with. Some of them think, well, now, look, I, I, I want to be a Christian, but I don't want so-and-so to know about it, see. Well, I see, that's not Christianity. Amen. Christianity has to display its token, Amen. see, publicly, in public life, at the office, on the street, Amen. when trouble is around anything, in church, everywhere else. The blood is the token, and the token must be applied, see, or... It's not, even the cover, it's not in effect. The blood was a token or an identification. Identifying this person has been redeemed. Now, well, notice they had, they were redeemed before there was anything that ever happened. By faith they applied the blood. See, before it actually happened, the blood was applied by faith, believing that it was going to happen. See, before the, the wrath of God passed through the land, the blood had to be applied first. It was too late after the wrath had done fallen. Now, we have a lesson there that we could really uh, uh, maybe uh, bring it to your thought just a moment. Look, before it happens, for there's coming a time that when you'll not be able to have any blood applied. The lamb was killed in the evening time after being kept up for 14 days. And then the lamb was killed and the blood was applied in the evening time. You get it? Amen. The token never come into existence until the evening time. 
And this is the evening time of the age that we live in. This is the evening time for the, for the church. This is the evening time for me. This is the evening time of my message. I'm dying. I'm going. I'm moving out. And the evening time of the gospel. And we've come up through justification and so forth. But this is the time that the token has to be applied. I told you last Sunday I had something I want to talk to you about. This is it. The time that when you, you just can't play with it. It's got to be done. If it's ever going to be done, it's got to be done now. Because we can see that the wrath is about ready to pass through the land. Amen. And everything from under that token will perish. Amen. The blood as identifies you. Notice, for the animal life could not come back upon the human being. When the blood was shed, the life went out, of course. Because it was a unit. And when the life's blood was gone from it, the life being different from the blood. Now, the blood is the chemistry of the life. But the life is something different from the blood. But the life is in the blood. And the animal life could not come back upon the worshiper. When he shed this blood of the lamb, he had to apply the chemistry. Because that the, the life was gone and could not come back because it could not come upon a human being because the animal life doesn't have a soul. The animal doesn't know that he's naked. And he, he just he doesn't realize sin. It knows no, so therefore it's a living being but not a living soul. Therefore that animal life could not come back upon a human life because it didn't have a soul in that life. Now there's a life, a blood, a life and a soul in the life. The soul is the nature of the life. Therefore it had no certain nature. It was an animal. Therefore the blood stood for a token. That the life had been given. But. In this glorious place. Under this covenant. There is a difference between the blood and the life. The token for the believer today is the Holy Ghost. Not a blood, a chemistry, but it is the Holy Spirit of God. That is the token that God requires of the church today. God must see this token. He must see it in every one of us. Therefore, as the evening shadows are appearing, and the wrath is ready to be poured out from on high upon the un godly nations and upon the ungodly unbelievers upon the, the professors without a possession yeah. upon these things and I, I've tried to unfold myself and live right among it to see where it was standing before I said these things now we are living in the shadows and the wrath is ready to strike and God's requiring a token that you yourself have received his token. The Holy Ghost. It's the only way. And the only sign. That God will ever pass. Because it is the literal life. Of Jesus Christ. Returned back into the believer. Amen. The animal life. Could not return back. Therefore a blood. Had to be placed on the door. Upon the lintel. Upon the post of the door. That ever passer by. The whole public. Everybody coming by that house knew that there was a, a sign on that door of blood that a life had died at that door. Yeah. Amen. That's the way it has to be with every believer today. Filled with the Holy Ghost. A token that the shed blood of the Lamb, that life that was in the Lamb has returned back and it's publicly sealed in there. That everybody passing by talking to you has any associates with you seeing that the blood has been applied and the token of the life that was in that blood is up on you. Amen. You are safe from the wrath. 
Amen. That alone, not membership, no sir. The animal life could not come up on the believer because it was an animal. And it only spoke of a conscience showing that there would come a perfect sacrifice. And now, how could there be a more perfect sacrifice than God himself becoming the atonement himself? When God was made flesh in his own creative blood, that is the only way that a life of God could ever come back because all of us is born by sex. And therefore, the life that's in there is of the world. And that life will not stand. It's a thing that's already judged and condemned. You can't patch it up. There's no way to patch it. There's no way to, to smooth it up. There's no way to make it better. It's got to die. That's the only requirement there is. It's got to die. And the substitute, a life of Jesus Christ has to come into you, which is the Holy Ghost, God's token, that you have accepted the blood of His Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, in the days of Wesley, or the days of Luther, it was taught to believe. In the days of Wesley, the chemistry of the blood, but this is the last day where the, re- the token is required. Amen. That makes together the whole unit for the rapture. You see it? Amen. Water, blood, and spirit come when a mother gives birth to the baby. The first thing breaks a normal birth is a water. Amen. The second thing is a blood, and the next thing is life. There come from the body of our Lord Jesus Christ water, blood, and life. Amen. And the whole church, the bride together, has been made up through justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is the token. As Hebrews 11 says, All these who wandered about the sheepskins and goatskins and was destitute, and all these things that they've done, yet was not made perfect without us. And the church in this day that's received the token of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that the blood has been shed and that the Holy Ghost is up on the church without us, then they cannot raise. But they're depending on us for God promised he would have it. Somebody's going to be there. I don't know who it's going to be, but somebody's going to receive it. The only one thing I'm responsible is to preach it. It's God's business to look out for that predestinated seed. There's going to be there all because they're going to be there, each one of them, one with the other. The water, the age, the blood age, and now the token age of the Holy Ghost. And remember, Israel come through many things, but it was evening time when the token was required. Not in the morning. Not in the preparation of the 14 days of the keeping up of the Lamb, Israel knew something was coming. So did Luther know it. So did Wesley know it. So did Finney Knox Calvin know it. This is it. They knew there would come a time that the pillar of fire would return back to the church. They knew there would come a time that these things would happen. But they didn't live to see it, but they looked forward to it. Israel knew something was coming, but it was in the evening time when that lamb's blood, the token, was placed on the door. Yet the lamb was already put up. It's been the lamb all the way through. It was the lamb in Luther's time. It's the lamb, lamb in Wesley's time. But now is the token time. That each house must be covered by the token. Each house of God must be covered by the token. All that's inside of it must be covered by the token. And the house of God is the body of Jesus Christ. And by one spirit we're all baptized into this token and become part of it. That God said when I see this token displayed I'll pass over. What an hour that we are now living. Oh, a blood identified. Identified the believer because the life had gone out. Could not come back so he had to have a, a chemistry. He had to have like a paint, a blood, a chemistry that showed that life went from it. Now the very Spirit itself is a token. The Holy Spirit itself is the token, not the blood. The blood was shed at Calvary. That is true. But the blood, as far as it is, went back into the elements from whence it come, from the food that he lived on. But you see, inside that blood cell was a life that started the blood cell to move it. If it was, the chemistry had no life in it itself, and therefore it could not move. 
But when the life come into the chemistry of the blood, it formed a cell. It formed its own cell, then cell after cell. And become a man, and that man was God, Emmanuel, in flesh. But when that life returned back, the chemistry went to it. But the token is the Holy Ghost upon the church. that they see Christ, it has to be because a woman and her husband become one. They become one. And so does the bride and Christ become one. Amen. The ministry of the bride and the ministry of Christ is the same. Amen. You remember these form of treaties, O Theophilus, that I wrote to you, that Jesus began to do and continues to do. Amen. His death didn't stop him. No, sir, he returned again. Not a third person, but the same person returned again in the form of the Holy Ghost and to continue the work on and continues on, said the book of Acts. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's the token. That's the sign. When Peter and John passed through the gate called Beautiful, there lay a man who had been crippled, lame from his mother's wombs, and he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. See, and they talk to them and know that they were ignorant and unlearned man, but they taken notice to them that they had been with Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, the token was there in this place. See, such as I have, seeing a poor fallen brother laying there crippled, and disfigured and everything in the same life that was in Christ was in them such as I have in my name ye shall cast out devils not I will you will Amen. if you say to this mountain not if I say if you say to this mountain oh brother the hour of that token to be displayed is at hand Amen. we can see it we know that we're near the end now Brought all kind of messages up to show signs and wonders. Now here we come back for what the church has got to do. The token's got to be displayed. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Nothing else would work. It must be the blood. Now, the Holy Ghost is our token from God. As a great theologian, uh, a scholar, a Baptist brother fine man, fine character. When he come to me one time, and he said, oh, Brother Branham, he said, you talking about this Holy Ghost. He said, well, that's nothing new. He said, we've taught it all along through the ages. And uh, I said, well, uh, I, he said, we received the Holy Ghost. I said, when did you receive it? He said, when I believed, because I know that was a Baptist theology. That you, when you believe, you receive the Holy Ghost. But I said then, Paul said in Acts 19 to a bunch, a group of Baptists, which a Baptist preacher that had been uh, one of John's converts was proving by the Bible that Jesus was the Christ. When he passed through the upper coast of Ephesus, he finds certain disciples and he said to them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you have believed? They said, We know not where there be any Holy Ghost. Then he asked how they was to baptize. And they hadn't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the sacrifice lamb. They wasn't identified but with you at all. They just believed it. Like the medicine sitting there and hadn't took it. Paul commanded them to be baptized over again in the name of Jesus Christ. And when he did this, then the token came up on them. They were identified by the works and signs of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues through them and prophesying and magnifying God. They were identified as as uh, with their sacrifice. And the Holy Ghost is our identification. It's what identifies us as Christians, not our membership in churches, not our understanding of the Bible, not how much you know about the Bible. It's how much you know about the author, See, how, how much the author is living in you. It's your, it's yourself gone. You're no more. You reckon yourself dead. And the token is what lives in you. And it's not your life. It's him. Paul said the life that I now live. He lived a different life. And what he once did is not me, but Christ liveth in me. There is the identified token that God requires. Identified with our uh, identification with our sacrifice. 
the life of our Savior in us, the Holy Spirit. Oh, what a what a positive token. There cannot be any more token. Oh, my. If you'd only could catch the, the thought of it. If I had the, the power this morning with words to express and place into your soul that's on the end, not your ears, but your soul. You, you could see the guarantee of it. it. It takes, it makes you so relaxed. What if you were, had committed a crime and you were going to be tried in a federal court and you know that if they found you guilty, that you were going to die. You were going to electric chair or the gas chamber, whatever public execution they were going to have for you, maybe hung or something, lynched. Whatever the penalty was. And you know that you had. You were guilty. You know you were guilty. And you must die. If you don't get some attorney to represent you. That who can get you out of the thing. And now you'd want the best attorney that you could have. And then again an attorney. That was a good shrewd attorney. You'd feel that your case was a little, you could relax a little bit because you had an attorney, but still there would be a question whether this attorney could change the judge's idea or change the jury. If this attorney, with his shrewd speaking and the knowing of the laws, could change that and could plead your case and prove that, that you should live, but yet in all of his, his great authority, and the great speech that he can make and the impression he can put upon the jury or have with the judge. You, 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 maybe you might get a relax for a few minutes, but still, there would be a question in your mind. Can he do it? But in this case, the judge himself becomes our attorney. Amen. God became man. Amen. There was no attorney could do it. Amen. We couldn't find one. Moses and the law, the prophets, nothing could do it. So the judge become both jury, attorney, and judge himself and took the justice of his law in his own hands and paid the price of it himself. How much more secure could we be and send his own life back and forth as a witness that he's accepted it? Huh, safely, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how fear no evil for thou art with me. When he becomes both judge, jury, and, and, and attorney, he pleaded our case. We found guilty by his own law. And he come and took the guilty person's place that was in the sanctuary. He took his sin. He took it upon himself and died and paid the price and shed his blood and give back his own token. His own life. While we're perfectly, the case is dismissed. There's no more sin to the believer. Oh, God have mercy if the people can't see that. That there's no more case. He that heareth my words and believeth on him and sent me has eternal life and shall not come to the judgment but pass from death into life. There's the case. Case dismissed. No more case to it. Amen. Then safely, safely with a token applied when death begins to smite against the door out there, it has no control. Yes. The token is applied. Only the token is recognized now. He, he did that so that the token could come. The token was God's life. And when God made the first man, he made him a son. And the son uh, it was so corrupt that he listened to his wife instead of God. And the woman listened to the devil instead of her husband. And when it did, it so corrupted them together that it brought a pollution. And he knew that when they did that, they'd have to bring children into the world. The fruit in the midst of the tree could not be touched. And then when it was, they brought this sin upon themselves. And therefore, the whole human race that was born was in sin. There's no way to come out. 
And then God came down. There's only one way to get him back. And that's to get him back a son again. And how can he do it when his own law stood there and said he's condemned? Then the Father himself become one of us. That's the real lamb. That's his purpose he had in mind. That's the reason the lamb was so identified in the Garden of Eden, knowing that the lamb and dove would meet at one time. When the lamb and dove would be together. That's when he owed through that, we can all be together. And he was willing to make such a sacrifice. Now that the token could be applied, that we're no more aliens. We're no more strangers, but we're sons and daughters of God. Amen. Both Adam and Eve, the woman and the man, joined together are sons and daughters of God in Christ Jesus by his great sacrifice. And then so that there would be no mistake. The seed of this life that must be planted in the earth of this body. That is a, a perishable seed. And the life, if it's a perverted life in the seed, it perishes with the seed. But he put eternal life into it and identified it as his own. But in the resurrection, he raised it up again and nothing to be lost. Do you see what I mean? There it is. It cannot perish now. A life lays over. It's a token. Lays over that little body. Lays over that soul, that person. There's a token over there, the Holy Spirit, that it belongs to God. It says, when I see the token, I'll pass over you. A positive token. The Holy Spirit is our token. Therefore, when you receive the Holy Ghost, you pass from death to life. That's all I said. Because life is in you. You can no more perish. The Bible said, he that's born of God does not commit sin. Or he cannot sin. For the seed of God. Amen. The seed of God remains in him. And how can he sin when the sinless God is in him? When he's in a sinless God, how can he sin? No matter what he's done, the blood's covered him. He's a new creature now. His desires and ambitions is of heaven. Because he's changed from a cucklebur to a wheat. His desires ain't the same as he once was. And he displays it. You say, well, I believe that is still sinning. Ah, you're deceived. Okay. It can't display nothing but the token. Israel was commanded to stay under that blood until marching orders come. Don't go out from under it. When once under that token, they were sealed in there. Don't leave that. They stayed right there until the midnight struck and the trumpets blow. And when the trumpets blow, the old ram's horns begin to blow. Each one marched out with his provision going to the promised land. So does a man or woman who's filled with the Holy Ghost. He's sealed away and secured from all harm and danger. His whole life displays what he is. Wherever he walks, whatever business he does, whoever he talks with when he comes in contact with, women when he comes in contact with, associates when he comes in contact with everything, that token's laying there. Amen. 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 When he comes to death, I'll fear no evil for the heart with me, that token lays there. Amen. When it comes to the resurrection, he'll be there for God will raise him up in the last day. Jesus said so. And when I see the blood, the token, I'll pass over you. Oh, <clears throat> Remember, if that token was not displayed, even the covenant was annulled. That's right. The covenant was annulled. There was no, there was no covenant as long as that token wasn't there. The token stood for the covenant. God made a covenant with them. Yes, sir. But the token had to be, it wasn't in effect. The covenant wasn't, unless the token was there. There might be many Jews could say, come here. I ain't got no blood on my door, but I want to show you something. I'm a circumcised Jew. I'm circumcised. That didn't mean that. Amen. When I see the blood, Amen. when I see the token, you might say I'm Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, or whatever you want to be, but when I see the token, Amen. you say I'm a believer. My mother was a member of this church. My daddy was a member of this church. I've been a member there since a child. That don't mean that. 
I don't lie, steal, I don't do this, I, I don't mean that. Amen. I've gone to Branham Tabernacle. I do this, that, other. I believe all the word. That Jews can say, I believe Jehovah. He'd have listened to the message of the hour if he did. Amen. 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 This is the message of the hour. I believe the message of the hour. Yeah, the blood was applied in the evening time. They might have said, I, uh, uh, I'm a Jew. People say, I'm a Christian. I can show you my long membership. I want you to tell me where I ever stole anything that's ever in law courts. Show me where I ever committed adultery. I ever done all these things or something like that. Show me one place. I don't mean a thing. Amen. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. no matter how much covenant he was, the covenant is without effect. It's not effective. You say, well, I'm a Bible student. I don't care what you are. Amen. Without that covenant, the wrath of God's upon you. Amen. Right. It's caught up with you. Yeah, your sins will find you out. What is sin? Unbelief. You've disbelieved the message. You've disbelieved the word. You've disbelieved the witness of the token itself. Once identified itself in the midst of us. And have you disbelieved that? No matter how much you disbelieve it, it's got to be applied. You might say, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it's the truth. I accept it as the truth. Then that's all good, but yet it's got to be applied. What this one Jew stand there stirring the blood as the lamb was bleeding, saying, this is Jehovah. And there stood a priest saying, yes, sir, I believe that's true. But on his own house, it hasn't been applied. He don't want to identify himself out there with that group. <laughs> no, sir, this fanatics with the blood on the door. He don't want that identification, no matter how much priest he was. How much he knowed the word. How well he had been raised. What works he had done. How much he gave to the poor. How much he had sacrificed. Paul said, I give my body to be burned as a sacrifice. Give all my goods to feed the poor. I have faith to move mountains and so forth. And speak in tongues like men and angels. And all these other things. He said, I am nothing. Until the tokens have been applied. Amen. Until this token. That's what I'm speaking on tonight. The love. See? Now, until this has been applied. I am nothing. See, I don't care. You might have cast out devils. You might have healed the sick by your prayer of faith. You might have done all these things. But if that token's not there, you're under the wrath of God. Amen. You might be a believer. You might stand in the pulpit and preach the gospel. Many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have not I prophesied in your name? Amen. Preached in your name. Have not I cast out devils in your names? That both Methodist, Baptist, and Pentecostals. Amen. Jesus said, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Amen. I never even knew you. Amen. But when I see the token, I'll pass over you. Amen. It's God's requirement of the hour. The evening time message is to apply the token. Amen. Satan stole all kinds of counterfeits of shake of hands and evidences and everything like that. Forget it. Amen. Now has arrived at the token itself. Amen. Not some counterfeit, make-believe, substitutionary, anything. The hour is here when the token himself is identifying himself right among us and proving that he's the same Jesus Amen. yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And he's right with the word. Amen. It's got to be applied. A man that says he's got the token, deny this word, then what about it? Amen. You can't do it. The token's got to be there. When I, the blood shall be a token unto you. Now the Holy Spirit, the life that was in the blood is a token unto you. Get to it in a moment. See, The Holy Ghost is a token. The case is closed. Yes, sir. Now remember, and I doesn't matter what you are, how good you are. How many times you've jumped up and down. How many churches you've joined. How many good things you've done. It won't mean one thing to you if the token isn't flying. This is the evening time. That worked all right in the days of Luther. That worked all right in the days of Wesley. But it don't work now. No. Yeah, keeping up the lamb was all right then. Those who died then before the lamb was applied. The blood was different. Yes, sir. They went on because of good conscience. They'd be judged. Whether they, they were, if they were predestinated, it struck them. If it didn't, it don't. That's all. It's just God. He He justifies who He will. Have mercy on who He will. He condemn who He will. He's God. Amen. That's all. Amen. He has mercy on whom He has mercy and condemns who He wants to condemn. A Jew can plainly show by the circumcision that he is a believer. There's many men, fundamental man, can take this Bible 
Say, I am a believer. And Jesus said, by faith we are saved. And I am a believer. But that baptism of the Holy Ghost is nonsense. Then the token isn't applied to much how much he believes. It's an all. That's right. Just like the circumcision of the Jew. He said, I'm a Jew. Why do I have to go out there and act like that other bunch of fanatics? Moses standing up and down the street said, the evening message is here. It shall come to pass. At the end of the 14 days, you shall gather the congregation together and kill the lamb. The whole congregation of Israel shall kill it. Put their hands up on it, identifying themselves with it. And the blood shall be struck upon the post and upon the lintel of the door. And when I see the blood, I pass over you. It's a token that you've accepted the death of the lamb that I provided for you. The blood was a token. Now the spirit is a token. You shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, not man days hence. And when the blood was shed, the token was set down on the day of Pentecost like a rushing mighty wind. Amen. That was a theme of every apostle. That was, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Repent every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive this gift of the Holy Ghost for it's a token. Amen. That you pass from Amen. death into life. There you are. When that Je- Jewish church faded out, the Gentiles taken over in that perversion like that. Now she's come out to get that remnant of the Gentile for his name's sake, the bride. You know what I mean? See what the scripture's speaking of here? If the token was not displayed, then the covenant was not effective. It must be because if you say you believe and you don't follow the instructions of the word, then you don't believe. Amen. Though you be circumcised, though you join, though you're baptized, you're doing all these things like that, that still ain't the token. The Holy Ghost. This fine scholar went on talking to me as I said a while ago. He said, Billy, he said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. What more could the man do but believe God? I said, that is true, doctor. It's right. He did believe God. The Bible said so. You're right. As far as you come, you're correct. As long as the, the, the 12 spies that was sent out to go over and spy out on the land of Canaan. As long as they went forward towards Canaan, they were gaining ground. Amen. But when they come to the borderline, yes. then they rejected. I said, you Baptists are all right as far as you come. But have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Amen. Amen. I said, remember, God recognized Abraham's faith. He, he believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. That's true. But then God gave him the seal of circumcision as a sign. A sign to him. Not that his flesh circumcised had anything to do with his soul. But it was a sign. That he had God had recognized his faith. And he gives us the sign of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That he has recognized us as believers. For repent and be baptized, everyone, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises to you. You get the point now. The Jews, no matter how much they could prove that they were circumcised, but the token had to be shown. If not, there the covenant was not effective. It was the same now. Same thing. No matter what you do, no matter how much you can you can explain the Bible, you might be a Bible student, oh my. <laughs> you might you might say I'm a believer in everything, but still the token is required. A Bible student, you say, I was a good person, Brother Branham. I don't care what anybody says. You can't beat that man. I never see him do anything wrong in my life. That don't have that to do with God. There's one requirement in that alone. And you cannot do that. You cannot put the blood on the lintel of the door where the token could not be unless the lamb died. And the blood was a positive sign that the Lamb died. No make believe the Lamb died. Amen. And the Holy Ghost is a positive token that your Lamb died and you receive the token upon yourself for His very life is in you. Amen. There's no make believe. There's no put on. There's no impersonation. It's there. Amen. You know it. You know it. The world knows it. The token is there. No matter how good the person was. Might have been a Bible student. It might be a it might be any kind of a, a good church member. 
It might be a good person. It might be a, a denominational head. Uh, it might be the, the hierarchy of Rome. I, I don't know who it is. Not, but I don't make anything. But Israel, any Bible student knows that Israel was a type of the church. Yeah. Exactly to the promised land. And that's where she's journeying. But when the evening time come and the journey was on, there was one solemn requirement. No matter how much Jew he had been, how well he kept his crops, how well he had taken care of the neighbors, how much he had done, how good a member he was, how much tithes he paid, all these things was fine. That was okay. He was a good man. Recognized among his people as a good man. But without the token of the blood, he perished. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, may God help me, both present and in the tape, to pin that down. Amen. No matter, you might have preached the gospel, you might have cast out devils, you might have spoke with tongues, you might have shouted, danced in the spirit, but without the token, you say, can I do it? Paul said you could. Amen. Though I speak with tongue like men and angels, though I give all my goods to feed the poor, my body to be burned as a sacrifice, I have faith to move mountains and these things. I'm nothing yet. Amen. Don't rely upon that. It's the token. No matter how much you've done, how good you are, when the wrath of God flashes, it'll only recognize a token. It is a token that a price has been paid that's been required. And the price that was paid was the life of Jesus Christ and He gave His life and His Spirit comes back up on you as a token that you are received. And you carry the token with you. Amen. Day and night. Not just on Sunday. Amen. It's all the time. You have the token. When I, the blood shall be a token unto you. You say, I still believe. I am a believer. That's all right. But if you reject the token, then how are you going to be a believer? It speaks against you. Amen. See? It speaks against your testimony that you do. Bible student, good person, church member, ever what you are, it doesn't mean a thing. Yes, sir. Maybe your father is a preacher. Maybe your, your mother was a saint. That's, that's okay. They have to answer for themselves. As I said... Try, people try to make God some big old fat doty grandfather. See? Yeah. A bunch of grandkids it's, it's like little uh, Rickies and Elvis's and there's no harm in them. Not God. He has no grandchildren. He's a father. Amen. Got to be born again in that big soft doty. He's a God of judgment. Amen. The Bible speaks he is. His wrath is fierce. Amen. Don't you trample on that and expect the goodness of God someday to take you in your sin and take you to heaven. If he'd have done that, he'd excuse all this year. Amen. And I'll tell you, if you'll believe his word, or you'll, be, you'll perish. Amen. And when you believe his word, the token will be upon you. Amen. Uh, death was ready to strike Egypt that night at any time. It was a fearful time. All their ceremony, all their feast days and fast days, God had visited them. God had showed his great signs and wonders in the midst of them. What is that? Now stop a minute. God had showed them His grace. He'd give them a chance. They couldn't turn it down. They said, oh, there's nothing to do. That's nonsense. It's just some up in the cataracts. There's an eruption of, of red uh, mud flew out. That's what made the sea red. Then the hail came. Then the frogs came. God had prepared a place and put his word in a prophet's mouth and what he spoke had come to pass. Yes, and they see it. They couldn't deny it. What Moses called for, that's what Moses got from God because he only spoke the word of God. Amen. He said, I'll make you a God. Moses was a God to them. See? They know no difference. So he said, you'll be a God and Aaron will be your prophet. See, you'll be like a God. For I'll take you, your voice, and I'll create with you. Uh, speaking the people can't deny because right there it is. Amen. What you say will happen. Oh my. Amen. I'll show you those things. Uh, and Egypt saw it. They saw it just before the evening time or just at the evening time. He showed them his goodness. He showed that he could take it away. Heal. Magicians tried to do the same thing. The impersonators. You always find them. There were Jambers and Jambers, they stood there, but when it came to the real thing, they didn't have it. Amen. Right. Amen. They followed along a little while, but after a while, 
their folly was made manifest. And don't the Bible say the same thing will happen in the last Amen. days? As Jambres and Jambres withstood Moses. But their folly was made manifest. Yeah, so will it be again. There it is. Man of perverted minds, reprobates concerning the truth, the fact. They might have congregations and great things and great pie, big flowery things, but the hour will finally arrive. Amen. Stand steady with the token. That's what God wants us to do. Hold to his word. Don't move from it. Stay right with it. The Bible has said so. Death was striking. God had showed them mercy. Showed powers and signs. Now let's stop just for a moment or two on that clock there. Let's just think in our minds back what he promised would happen in the last days. I wonder if we have not just about check up too. He had done all these things and yet they still desire not to repent or to believe the message of the day. They still didn't want to do it. Although it had been displayed before them and had been surely made known, and when you see such things taking place, it's a sign of oncoming judgment. Judgment will follow those things. It's always done it. And this won't be no exception. The judgment follows Grace. Amen. When mercy is spurned, there's nothing left but judgment. Amen. So it'll always follow. Now, we have seen every spiritual happening is a sign from God. Be careful. Notice that. See, watch every spiritual happening. Everything that happens is a sign. We're not here by accident. Amen. These things just don't happen by accident. It's a sign. It's a sign to get a, get to safety quickly. Amen. Noah was a sign to his generation. Elijah was a sign to his. John was a sign to his. Everything, the message of the hour is a sign. Watch it. Look what it's doing. It's a sign. Everything has a meaning. At no other time could this type of a message ever happen. It could not have come in Luther's day. Could have come in Wesley's day. You couldn't even come in Pentecostal day. You couldn't do it. See, there's no been no such thing happened, and yet it's promised in the Bible. Amen. We're at the end. Nothing could happen. It couldn't happen until this time. It's happening for a sign. Wonder what is the sign? Oh, little people, my brother, sister, get under that token quickly. Amen. Don't don't take no substitute. Don't 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 do that. See, don't just imagine you stay there until you know that the token is applied. Until your whole, the mind that was in Christ is in you. Until all the nonsense of the world is gone. Until the whole heart's desire is Him. Then you know, then you know something's happening. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Not make believers, but believers. See? Now, we don't want to take any any chance on it. You mustn't do it. The message of the hour is a sign to the churches. It's a sign to the people. Don't. Uh, are, you, are you catching it? Uh, I hope on the tape that they're doing the same thing. See? In other parts of the world. See? The hour sign is here. There's a token that's got to be applied. And no other time could have come. Notice. God's preparation for that time. Now, as we know that the Bible said all those things happen for examples see, to us. Notice, when God got ready to judge Egypt, first, he made a preparation. What did he do at the first time? He never changes his order. The first time, when he, got, when he made his preparation, he sent a prophet with a message. Amen. First thing he done Amen. to his people was sent a prophet with a message. The next thing he done to identify this prophet, he sent a pillar of fire for identification. Amen. To identify. Amen. And the third thing he sent was a token. Yeah. That's exactly right. The token, what was a token mean? Assurance. Amen. Amen. First, his prophet with the message. He identified himself among the, with, the, with a pillar of fire with his prophet. Then he sent a token to get under this blood that he had accepted this substitute death in your place. Then the blood was a token that he looked at you and heard the message. 
believed on the pillar of fire and had accepted the substitutionary that he had provided for you and you were under the blood of the very chemistry of the life that went out for you. Amen. Amen. My, what a perfect, what a perfect thing that is. That you're under the blood. Now you're under the Spirit. Under the Holy Spirit. See, you believe the message of the day. See, you believe the, 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 the power, the, the, the pillar of fire. You believe that. See, and you do. Now, now look, just to believe it is not enough. Not to, to, to walk around where it's at isn't enough. See? That's to make yourself worse. For he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him is sin. See? Those borderline believers. Jesus spoke of the same thing. Hebrews the 6th chapter. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have been made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted of the good word of God and the world to come if they shall fall away to renew themselves again to repent and sin, that they crucify to themselves the Son of God and count the covenant of the blood wherewith they were sanctified with. The chemistry there sanctifies. It ain't the token. The blood's not the token now. The life is the token. The life could not be there because it was an animal. The chemistry was the token. You'd have to have literal blood applied on the door. But now it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're coming to it just in a moment. To prove that thing. It's the life that is a token. Your life is gone. And you are dead. And your life is dead. Amen. You are hid in God through Christ. And sealed in there by the Holy Spirit. The mind that was in Christ is in you. And Christ and the Bible and the Word is the same. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was God. Then you and the Word and God and Christ are the same. And if ye abide me and my Word. You ask what you will. It'll be done. See? Put the power right into Moses' lips to go out there with his word and speak. The frogs come. Amen. Speak. Frogs left. Speak. Lice come. Speak. Life. But lice left. Amen. Amen. But then the token was required for all Israel. All Israel was required of this token. And when I see the token, I'll pass over you. Oh, my, my. What an assurance. Israel coming out of Egypt was a type. Of the antitype today. Egypt was the church. And Israel represented the bride. And as Israel come out of Egypt. So does the bride come out of the church. Amen. See? Because there has to be something there for it to come out of. Yes. And it's got to come out of. So if it was a type. The, the church is down in Egypt. In the world. Amen. And in sin. Amen. And does not care a, a, a tinker about your token. That's right. They don't even believe it. That's right. That's right. But Israel loved it. Amen. For it was salvation to them. Amen. Oh. Amen. Oh, it should make us happy. It should make our hearts. Oh, we applied. Church, don't, don't fail, will you not? Don't, don't, don't let the sun set. Don't, 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 they don't rest day or night. Amen. Don't take no chance. It won't work, uh, children. It won't work. You must have the token. Amen. You say, I believe, yes. I go. I, yeah, I believe the message. I, that's all right, but that, that's good. But you must have the token. Amen. Do you hear Ram Tabernacle? Amen. You Amen. must have the token displayed. Without it, all your believings in vain. Right. You'll live a good life. You listen to what the Word says. You go to church and try to live right. That's fine. But that's not it. When I see the blood, that's the token. And the token here is not... Because what he, he had to see the actual chemistry. Because the life had gone. He had gone from as an animal. But here, it's his own life Amen. that was in the blood. And the chemistry was only a signal or a sign of sanctification. But the life itself is a token. For without the circumcision, without the token, you're not even in the covenant. Amen. The whole thing works together. If you say you're circumcised to the word in it only, then you'll believe the word. If you believe the word, then the token's got to come. Amen. For he said, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. There you are. 
Oh, my. Notice. Then the preparation for his promised land people. Notice what he did. First, he had a people that he had made a land for them. He had prepared a land for them. And now he sent down there a preparation for it. For the promised land people. It was only for those who were predestinated to that promised land. Right. And how he done it? He sent a prophet with a message. Identified it by a pillar of fire. And gave a token that they could rest assured that it was right. That's right. It was for consolation. Israel coming out of Egypt then was a, a type. This is the antitype of the church coming out of the denomination. Now, not all denomination. I mean the bride. See? Some people, this, some of the independents just as bad as the denominations. Sometimes worse. I'm talking about the applied token. The token agrees with every word. It's got to because it is the word. It's the life that was in the word. My words are spiritual. They are life, said Jesus. See, when Moses began his ministry in Israel with great signs, you see, Israel quickly gathered from all over Egypt to Goshen, coming back to the home place because they know something's fixed to happen. Oh, what a time. Oh, they come from the east and west. They come from the lands afar. That's right. You've heard the song. To feast with the king, to dine as his guest. How blessed these pilgrims are, beholding his hallowed face. A glow with love divine. Blessed partakers of his grace as gems in his crown to shine. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. Our trials will then be o'er. Oh, what if our Lord this moment should come for those who are free from sin? Oh, then would it bring you joy, our sorrow and great despair. When our Lord in glory comes, we'll meet him up in the air. This playing I told him. I'll raise him up in the last days. Certainly, we're in the days. The people gathered into Goshen. They were ready. They know something's fixed to happen. It's just like you take ducks when it's time for swarm and they all run right together. When bees, everything else gets ready, there's some instinct draws them. The Holy Spirit draws the people. Oh, when it comes time for the great wrath of God to fall, ever there come two ducks, male and female. Here come two geese, male and female. Here come two horses, male and female. Something or another pulling the predestinated. The rest of them perished. Yes. Oh. The rest of them perished. But those who felt that tug to come in, they knew that ark was prepared. It was a token that there's coming a rain. They know that there was coming a rain. No matter what the display was and what other people thought, they know there was something inside of them that said, get into there right quick. Get into there. Because that's the only place that's going to be safe because God prepared a prophet. He set the ark as a sign. He said, get in there. And the rain was coming. And they went right in there, two by two. All the animals went in two by two into the ark because they got beneath it no matter what the rain. And all outside of that ark perished. Amen. All outside of the token of the blood perished. Amen. Every one of them, everyone outside of the token of the Holy Ghost will perish. Amen. Amen. No matter how good, how much church members, there's a lot of them in the days of Noah, there's a lot of them in the days of Moses, but a man that failed to apply the blood as a token was he perished. Those who failed to go in the ark perished. Those who failed to come into Christ, for he is the ark. First Corinthians 12 said, By one spirit we're all baptized into one body. Amen. The mythical, not church, but the mythical. Not the denomination, the mystical body of Jesus Christ Amen. by one spirit. Capital S P I R T Spirit. We are all immersed into this one body. Amen. Then the token is on the door. For you are in Christ, and He was the one your sacrifice who stood the judgment. And when God looks upon that, He can't do a thing. Amen. You're just as safe as you can be because Amen. God in Christ is the self same person. Amen. The Spirit then made flesh and dwelt among us, and there is God with His own self, Amen. and you His own children Amen. into the body. 
There you are. Not a chemical, but the Spirit. I will pass over you. Amen. They come from all Egypt together into this one place so they could be under this token. And they've come from Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Pentecostals, everything else to get under the token. Amen. Just exactly like it was then. It was a pillar of fire was represented there and one told the other, another told another, another told another and first thing you'll hear they all begin to come. They begin to come and they watch the sign of God. They said, judgment is at hand. Then the prophet said, I have heard from God. There will be a token. And you put the blood upon the door. Slay the lamb. Put the blood upon the door. And that will be a token because death is fixing to strike. Let me tell you today as his servant. Unless the token is on the door. There is a spiritual death going to strike. And all churches are headed back for the, for the council of, world council of churches. They're all going back to Catholicism. And only those who are genuine born again Amen. is going to stay out. Amen. Remember not your Pentecostal denominations because they're already in it. Amen. Shows they are dead. Amen. They are perished. They sacrificed. They went back. They put him outside the door. But he's looking for the token. Because the only thing they relied upon was speaking in tongues. Yeah. Don't you rely upon no speaking in tongues, no nothing else, but let the token itself be there. The person of Jesus Christ, His own life in you. Circumcised, not just this, that, but circumcised your whole being. God, you and Christ are one. Christ is in you. And His life lives out through you. Now, now, from all Egypt, and look, now, as we see what they did, as we see the time appearing, we're commanded to do the same thing. Did you know that? Watch what the prophet said. And we're going to read now, if you want to read. In Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and if you want to read with me, I want to read a verse or two here now before we go on. Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's begin with the 26th verse of the 10th chapter of Hebrews. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yes, sir, the Hebrews, the 10th chapter and the 26th verse. See, for if we sin willfully after that we have received, let's see, have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for the judgment, the fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversary. Go. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much more sore punishment those suppose ye? Shall he be though worthy who has trod under the foot, under the foot of the Son of God and counted the covenant of the blood wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace which come from the blood? Minister, member, Good man, moral man, whatever you are. And you know that God taking cigarettes from you. Women, you know he taking shorts and, and short hair and everything from you. You know you did that. Amen. But then if you turn around and do despite and count that blood of the covenant as it was an unholy thing who has sanctified you and brought you this far. Like the spies. If they come right up here at the borderland and looked over and said, well, I know it's there, but... The obstacle's too great. We look like grasshoppers. They perished in the wilderness. Borderline believers. Don't just come this far and say, I believe the message. You obey the message. Come into Christ. You say, I believe every word said, Brother Branham. That's good, but that's just, that's just being able to read. Take the message. Take it into your heart that you must have the token the very life that was in Christ being you. Amen. When I see that, I will pass over you. Amen. As we see the great end time signs on earth today, we know that that's right. Now look, I've waited for this for a long, long time, for this message to you. See? And you've seen the end time signs, and I've preached it to you and showed it to you by everything that Christ said. Is that right? Amen. You'll admit that. Amen. At the end time, I don't see nothing left. You say, what about the mark of the beast? Those who reject the Holy Spirit is already marked by the beast. Amen. The punishment will come later. In Israel, 
when the trumpet sounded in the jubilee year, every man, you know which Christ is reading that? He just read half of it because this half of it was applied to that time. See? He sent me to bind up the broken heart and preach deliverance and so forth, see? But in an acceptable year of the Lord, the rest of it, he never he never read that. He laid the scroll down. Or that's for this day. He just read part of it. Part was his day. Now this is what he's going to do today. This is what he's speaking through his uh, anointed spirit to the church today. Now's the hour. Now's the time. Receive it, people. Receive it. What? We see the great end times of flashing red lights everywhere upon nature. We see nature flashing the light. The time is at hand. We see it up on the church. Flash of the light. She's condemned. The time is at hand. She's in the world. We see it upon uh, upon the skies, upon the sea, upon the nations, upon everywhere in the sun, moon, stars, signs. We see the end time signs of the Holy Ghost return back upon the people as it was in the days of Lot. How the Holy Spirit worked through that human flesh there that was God manifested in flesh. Yes, How God would manifest himself in, himself in his bride in that day and show the same sign. Jesus said it will be the same thing. In the last days we sit. We see the same pillar of fire. Even signs. It's tough to pictures of it. And yes, so forth. We see the end time signs is at hand. We know it's here. And then seeing this. If you believe me. If you don't believe me, believe the signs. Amen. Believe the word. For they speak of what I'm telling you. Amen. If I ain't telling you the truth, they'll never speak back. God will never speak to a lie. Amen. God speaks to truth. Amen. And these words are testifying that I'm telling you the truth. They are the one that testifies of the message that I'm preaching. Amen. Not only the angel down there on the river that day has said, your message will forerun the second coming of Christ. The works itself. If you can't believe that angel told the truth, believe the works. For the Bible said these things will happen at the end time. There are they that testify. They're the ones that speaks louder than my words or anyone else. It's his word. They testify of the time. And we see these great horrible ensigns upon the people and the signs of the time upon the earth. Distress between the nations. We see Israel in her homeland. The ensign, the six star port star of David flying. The oldest ensign in the world. The oldest flag in the world. She's a nation. She's a government. She's her own people. She's in the League of Nations. She's, she's, she's all these things. She's in the UN. And she's got her own currency, everything. Jesus said, this generation shall not cease until everything be fulfilled. Amen. And remember, the very night that Israel was made a nation as a night, the angel of the Lord appeared to be right on her. That's right. There we all are. Everything is pointed up exactly the truth. I have not lied to you. I've told you the truth. God has testified that I've told you the truth. Now remember, I'm your brother. I'm a man. See, I'm just a man just like you are. But somebody's got to bring it. Somebody's got to say it. That wasn't my choice. It was his choice. And I've told you the truth. And he's testified right back that it is the truth. And we see these things up on the earth today. Oh, people, this is the last hour. Get that token over you quickly as you can. Or you get in the token. Get in the token. Amen. As we see the great end sign and the time at hand, warning us, time is at hand. Oh, take this solemnly. We should love one another. Oh, my. We should be so in love. Don't never speak evil against one another. If somebody makes a mistake, pray for him right quick. We are together in this. With God, we are brothers and sisters. All oh, live godly. Live, live like daughters of God. Live like sons of God. Live sweet, kind, humble. Let no evil come in your mind and your thinking. Just, just dismiss it. If it knocks on the door, take it away. Just say, just show your token. Amen. Just keep walking. I'm under the blood. Remember, there's a lot of them come by them women that night and say, Hey, Gertie, Lily, somebody, come on out. We're going to a party tonight. Uh -uh, I'm under the blood. I'm under the token to stay here. My love is to my maker. Amen. Death is in the land tonight. Death is in the land today. Judgment is waiting. She's pending. Atomic and hydrogens and all kinds of disaster is waiting for the nations. And God's moving His church and showed off. We've been keeping the Lamb up now for quite a while, watching, seeing what He's doing, watching His nature and everything. But now the token's got to be applied. Amen. It's got to be applied. It's the only thing. Except the man be born of the Spirit and of water. 
He will in no wise enter in. We should love one another. Believers should separate themselves from the world. Amen. Don't just take it in our life. You know, you people that listen to this on tape, you women, you men, you listen a minute. If you ever believe me, you believe it now. It's time for to quit fussing with one another. Believe the message of the Bible. Believe Jesus Christ and love and honor and respect one another. Man, respect your wives. We respect your homes. Bring your home together. Because remember, the slam was for the home. Not just one. The whole home too had to be brought. Everything had to be brought in. We should love each other. And believers should separate themselves from the world. Notice, they were not just yet uh, come together to talk about the message. They come together to apply the blood. To apply the token. That's what you must do, Pastor Neville. And to this congregation, trustees, deacons, to you, brethren, it's time that we laid aside all the foolishness of the world. That's right. Time we laid aside everything else. We've seen enough now that we are positive, sure. And the token must be applied. Without it, you're going to perish. You must perish. That's the only thing. Oh, don't come together and say, I believe it. Get beneath it. Get into it. How do it? A one spirit. We're baptized. Into the body of Jesus Christ. Everybody believe with all your heart. See, he was not responsible for any out from beneath it. Who was that talking? That's a shortwave radio. From, shortwave from above? Through the, through the speaker. The guy didn't there? I heard somebody I say. believe it was Short wave, yeah. Oh, they, they got hooked up. I guess you're oh to the cars. Excuse me. I know somebody said something. I thought somebody wanted to say something to me and they didn't get it. You see, and that's the reason I, I said what I did. I seen you look around. I heard a voice. I thought somebody raised up to say something. I didn't know what it was. Now, now, thank you. But believe, get beneath it. Israel didn't come to you and say, let's all go over to Goshen today. We'll drive up to Goshen. You get on your camel and we'll take the ox cart and we'll take the Joneses over here and so forth and, and the Goldbergs and we'll all go up to, to Goshen. You know what? Moses is going to speak today. That wasn't it. No, sir, brother. Just get beneath that blood. Yes, indeed. Not to talk about it. Get into it. One of them say, you know, Mr. Goldberg, I actually know that's truth. Yes, uh, uh, brother, I believe it is a truth. I know that it is a truth. Mr. Lubinsky, what do you think about it? It's absolutely a truth. I seen the power of Jehovah God speaking. I seen those frogs come out of that land. I know that it didn't happen until he said it. And I know that that's Jehovah God. Now that's all fine. Are you circumcised? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, are you a believer? Yes, sir. And then when he heard Pastor Moses speak that day, he said, but you've got to get beneath that blood. For God said, the blood is a token. Amen. It's a token. No matter how much you believe, how much you're circumcised, that's a covenant God gave to Abraham and so forth. That's a covenant, but you've got to get beneath the blood. That's a token. For he said, when I see the blood of an Israelite or any, that's denomination or not denomination. Either one, Amen. you must come beneath the blood. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, undenomination, whatever you are, it's for an individual. You've got to come beneath the blood. Amen. Now, just don't talk about it. Receive it. Hear me. Hear me in the name of the Lord. Hear me. Got to come beneath the blood. He was not responsible for any persons from beneath the blood. God made it clear that all from under that blood would perish. Amen. May I use his words. All outside of Christ will perish. Amen. How do you get in Christ? 1 Corinthians 12. By one spirit. Not by one handshake. By one membership. By one denomination. That's what they're trying to make. it. They may do that. But by one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Amen. If an angel from heaven teaches anything else, Paul said, let him be cursed. Amen. That's the message. Come into Christ. Look, any persons outside of the token, God was not responsible. And God is not responsible for any person, big or small, popper, unpopper, 
rich or poor, bond or free, male or female. He is not responsible for anybody that's from under the token covenant. He's not responsible. You say, oh Lord, I did this. I cast out devils. Lord, I did this. I, I, I preached the gospel. Depart from you that work iniquity. I never even knew you. He only recognizes the token. Amen. Do you hear it? Say amen. amen. Uh, so it's up on you. He sat down here in that woods the other day, and the boys is wondering, said, here's two days. You ain't, I didn't even shoot a squirrel. So what was the matter? See, that's what it was. He said, place it up on them. Up on them. Said, you have talk, talk to me about it. No, it's in your lap. Amen. It's in yours. He won't recognize nothing but that covenant of the Holy Spirit. And you cannot receive that covenant unless you are saved, sanctified, and then baptized into the body. He will not. You might have an impersonation. You might feel good and jump up and down, speak in tongues and dance in the Spirit. That don't have one thing to do with it. Yeah! In the name of the Lord. God don't recognize that. Heathens do that. Witches do that. You say, I'm a scholar. I do this, that, or the other. You don't care how much scholar you are. The devil is too. Amen. Hmm? He only recognizes the, the token. That's the message of the hour. That's the message of this day. That's the message of this time. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. Not a sub substitute. Something the devil can place over on you. Like a frawny love to make a man love some other woman besides his wife or a wife, some other besides her, some this or something, a dishonorable thing. That's not real love. That's the devil. That's his works. It's something he's trying to hatch instead. A joy to drink and feel good about it. Say, I got the blues. I'll go out and get me a quart of liquor and forget about it. That's a death. God is your joy. God is your strength. Amen. Knowing the message. Knowing the truth. Amen. That's our sufficiency. Amen. He's my all sufficiency. Hallelujah. In him all things I have need of is in him. That's our strength. My help cometh from the Lord. Amen. You Christians look to him for your joy. Look to him for your strength. Look for him for your happiness. He is my peace. He is my joy. He is my love. He is my life. That's covenant. The token. Upon the door. Not responsible for one person. One person, no matter who you are. He's not responsible out from under. And remember, all the family was brought together. Oh, my. Amen. Oh. Remember, you say, well, my daddy's a preacher. My brother, my pastor. My, that might be true, too. But what about you? Uh, my. Remember. Only safe when the token was displayed. If a man was shared under here and his son was across the street, he was in danger. He would perish. His daddy would be saved. Or if the son was over here and his daddy over there, his daddy would perish. Only the token, when I see the token, I'll pass over you. That's the only thing. You say, well, my son's a preacher. Your mother say, I got the best boy or the best girl. I'm telling you, they're the sweetest thing. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit and such love. They're obedient. I never seen it. What about you, Mama? You say, my mother's the sweetest thing. I know if she dies, she's going to heaven because she's really got the token, Brother Brandon. But what about you, sis? The whole family must be brought under. Are you tired? I'll, it's 12 o'clock. Just a minute. I could cut it off and start tonight again, but... If you are going to wait just a little bit longer, I'll try to hurry. Amen. I'll praise this writing because I think right now while you're under the anointing of it, it'd be better to get it right now. Amen. Only when the token is displayed, then the whole family must be under that token blood. Papa, Mama, I know how you feel. I've got children too. i got to see them saved. I'm talking to myself today. I got brothers, I got sister, I got loved ones. I want to see them saved too. But remember, without the display of the token, they'll perish. There's no resurrection for them. They're gone. Only when the token's displayed. Look, Joshua, wish we had time to read it. 
Mark it down. Joshua, the second chapter. Believing Gentile harlot Rahab. Oh, I just wish it was about nine o'clock. I'd like, I'd like to take that. Yes, sure. Got that over on the thing. This harlot. Gentile. What? All her family. She was a believer. All her family. Had to get her that scarlet streak, that token. They had to go under or they'd perish. They had heard of the wrath of God. They had heard of the displaying signs and miracles of God among these people. And they had to receive it. She had to receive it. God destroying angel was coming. They knew it. Joshua is that angel. They were in line. And so is every nation in the world in line of God's judgment. This little old harlot. She had heard, faith cometh by hearing. She said, all the country's disturbed about you. That's right. Now, the spies that were sent in there to make arrangements and so forth, she honored those men. And she, she wanted to be saved. She said, I know that your God is God. And I've heard what great things that he's done. I know what he done to Oregon. I know what he done to the different nations. And I see that those who accept him are safe. And those who does not accept him are destroyed. And I don't want to live, she said. Oh, my. There you go. I want to live. For the, notice, jo, uh, Jericho had heard what God was doing. But they didn't want to take the warning. There is a denomination in this country around but what's heard what God's doing. Amen. Amen. They don't want to take the warning. His great power and signs have been displayed. What he done? He crossed right through the Dead Sea as if his own dry land. He caused, he created things and made frogs and lice and fleas to come into the air, created them by his word to his prophet. That was no secret. They know it. And Rahab said, I've heard that. I don't want to perish as these unbelievers. No, sir. No judgment had to follow because it's right in line. She knew it. So they made a way for her to escape it. They must have believed that their own big denomination of Jericho was able to resist the wrath of God. See? Their own big denomination. That's what many of them are thinking today. Yeah. Oh, surely God won't do it. That's what Satan said to Eve. Oh, surely God won't. He will. Because he said he would. Amen. And that's his word. Yes, sir. <laughs> Except a man be born. And these signs shall follow them that are born. See? This will all man know you're my disciples and so forth. See? All right. Wanted to do it. Oh. What happened? How? They were shut up. No revival is going to happen here. Our denomination won't sponsor such. We'll not have that kind of nonsense among us. I forbid any of you to go to that meeting. Jericho. Right in the line of the dam. But there must have been some tape boys slipped in somewhere. <laughs> For the predestinated seed. <laughs> they slipped over to her house and played some tapes. She made her, her own house a church to receive the message. They still got him, you know. Amen. The message got to the predestinated seed anyhow. Amen. We don't know how it got there, but it got there. Amen. So that the just will not perish with the unjust. Amen. God's seen to that today. Yeah. Yeah. Some way it slips in. We don't know how, though they won't sponsor it, but there's some seed out there that's predestinated. Anyone knows anything about the Bible know that that harlot was predestinated. Yeah. Yeah. Sure was. She did. The Bible said she perished not with them who believed not. That's right. That's right. But she believed the message of the hour. And God gave her a son by his messengers. Said take a, a scarlet red streak and tie it on your. Said remember 
If you don't tie that streak there or leave it there, what we've escaped by, we're not responsible for our own. And said, if you're out from under it, we're not responsible. Cold. Huh. Rahab. Every predestinated seed in here, you get out there and go to hunt them. Get your daddy, your mother. For we've just come under that atonement. Down in Egypt and everything that we didn't have under that token perished. Rahab, I'm giving you a sign. It's a token. I say in the name of the Lord, it's the same. If you will put that, I'm acquainted with that, with the messenger. I'm acquainted with the angel of wrath. Joshua is God's destroying messenger. I'm acquainted with him. And he knows that there has to be a token sign. You hang that there and I'll assure you I take oath. God took oath too. That what was out from under it would perish. And all that was under it would live. Now the same oath is today. The same thing. I will not let you perish with them who doesn't believe the message. And they should heard. The works have been done, and she believed it. But about, she's her and her uh, father and a couple of brothers or something was the only one believed in the whole city. See how few it is? Just one here and there. A little family have come out from a state. Is that right? Exactly. Now, you're talking facts. If you go to see what the antitype is, you have to see what the type was first. You have to see what the shadow is, then you know what the real things would look like. Amen. His power was displayed. Judgment is in line. They must believe in order to be saved. Yes, sir. And these little these fellows went in there, these messengers, and, um, and caught that predestinated seed that believed. She used her house for a church to receive these messengers. They wouldn't let them in them churches. No, sir. So she they won't let you either. They kick you out to say anything about it. Amen. They got all in her city that would believe under the token. That's exactly what we better do today. If you want some loved ones saved, you better get them in right now. When God's wrath destroyed that big city, the token sign held her house safely. Amen. What? The sign was on her token. Or the token was on her house. When the rest of the city shook to the ground. What was it? What was it? Joshua. The messenger of God. God himself recognized his messenger's message. Amen. 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 It proved it. Amen. It proved it. They recognized the message. He recognized his messenger's message. And when all the rest of the city shook down, there stood Rahab's scarlet token over the door and the rest of them was gone. Yeah, then right straight up went the destroying angels and destroyed everything that was in the city. Not even a piece of goods was left. One took out a piece of goods and had it perish with it. Now that denomination. Yeah. Took the whole thing and destroyed it. Cursed be the man ever tries to build it. His firstborn will die when he starts and so forth. God cursed it. Like that, that big thing that rejected the, great, the message of grace and mercy. Thought they were safely secured. Many people think today because I belong to the church, I'm safely secured. Don't you believe such nonsense? Amen. When the blood shall be a token unto you. The spirit now is a token unto you. The life that was in the blood. Same, let's think that. The same token that they used in Egypt, the same life token that was in the Egypt, is in Egypt. God used the same symbol up there. Joshua, a perfect type of Jesus, was true to the token sign that his messengers had preached. Joshua, when he said that, he said, don't touch that house or anything in it. It's reserved for the law. A Gentile! A harlot! A streetwalker! But she heard and believed. And she applied the token. No matter how stooped you are in sin, what you have done, that doesn't have one thing to do with it. Amen. You apply the token. It's for you. If you feel in your heart there's something tugging, it's for you. You apply the token. And the great jo- the word Joshua means Jehovah Savior. So does Jesus. He's the Savior. And Joshua, when he noticed messengers, 
this messenger turned back and said, I have obeyed your orders. And there was a woman we found when we played the tapes. You know, we found a woman that believed. And we told her that all that would come under that red sign back there, the token, it would mean. Now, I preached that. Will you honor Joshua? I sent you to do it. Amen. And then when that God honored it, the house never shut down. And then when Joshua stood there and gave the signal to destroy the whole thing, went right straight up and Rahab and all of her fee- people set right, and all their possession. Amen. 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 All their possession was in the house safely. They just stood there and didn't have to look out the window. They could read the scripture while the battle was going on. She come right back and courted, courted uh, the general in army and was raised up and come up in Bethlehem and her portion was lotted up in there to them and she brought forth uh, she brought forth a famous son and that famous son brought forth another famous son and that son brought forth another famous son until a great famous son came Amen. right back down on to Obed and on to uh, um, uh, Jess and on down into David that's right. Harlot Rehab, because she believed the messenger. She applied the token, and her house of Savior should perish down there where she's at. Listen close now. Oh, Savior, recognize it. All under it was saved in Egypt. All under it was saved in Jericho. All under it will be saved today. The blood-bound, blood lamb is a type of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 13, 10, and 20, I ain't got time to read it. Put it down, I was going to read it. It is called the everlasting covenant. Yeah. The blood of Jesus Christ is called the everlasting covenant. Yes, sir. Everlasting covenant. Why wasn't it called eternal covenant? Because it wouldn't be eternal. When we're redeemed, it's all over then. It's an everlasting, yeah. which means a certain amount of time. Till time is, it'll never be another one. When time runs out, we won't need no covenant. But until time runs out, we need the covenant. I remember Hebrews 13, 10 to 20. uh, Everlasting covenant. God's blood-bound promise makes us free from sin. Amen. There's no sin in Him. Sin, self, flesh. Worship Him and show forth His promised power. God's blood-bound Bound, token, bound, covenant people. Has the spirit of Jesus Christ in the air that he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Displaying the covenant. See, New Testament, testament means covenant. That's right, isn't it, Dr. Bale? Testament means covenant. The New Testament means the new covenant. The Old Testament was the old covenant under the Lamb that the life could not come back on the believer. The New Testament was the Lamb of God and his life comes back on us. Blood's life. See, blood is life in the New Testament. See, life is from the blood of the Lamb, which means the New Testament, New Covenant, that God, after those days, will I write my laws upon the fleshly tables of her heart. Amen. See, see, not upon the stony tables and a lamb's blood, which you had to say, yeah, I, I got the blood over here. Now, what does it say to you? But upon the tables of your heart. Amen. See, the Spirit Covenant will I make with the people. And it displays his power. John 14, uh, 12 says, He that believeth on me, uh, uh, the works that I do, shall he do also. New Testament is new covenant, new life. Shows Jesus has met every requirement for us that God required. To make us back truly sons and daughters of God under the blood for there is no more condemnation. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in. Amen. Amen. Not those who are believing it. Those who are in Christ Jesus that walk not after the flesh, but Amen. after Amen. the Spirit. Amen. And my word is Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh. Couldn't I take a text from that and say about a couple more hours? But we we'll hurry over it, you see. No more condemnation. Free from sin. Free from the cares of the world. Amen. No con why to them that have been by one spirit baptized into one body. There the blood of the Lamb has been applied. The God of heaven has accepted you, and your his life is in you, and your sons and daughters of God. Your character is God's character. What is it? A little pushover? No, sir. God's a God of judgment. 
He's a God of correct. It must be on the line. Nothing else will do. That's the kind of character you are because you're the character of your father. Amen. What? The life. Watch what? The life is took for the blood. See, the life itself is took. See, the life it took for the blood. See, the blood was applied and the life could not come on the believer than for the life of an animal, not the life. But see, instead of a human being, it was a super, super, super human being. Yeah. See? And that makes the human being now not only a human being, but he's a son and daughter of God by the super, 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 super life that was in him comes back upon you and changes you from a sinner and the things of the world, a church member and a denominational goer to a born again Christian. Amen. Filled with the spirit, the Amen. life of God just Amen. going from you like sparks from an anvil. Amen. As you walk full of virtue and love and gentleness and the Holy Spirit moving, speaking. Oh my. There you are. And with the what? Hearing the message. Watching the pillar afar and the blessed assurance. I've passed Amen. from death unto life. No, therefore, no condemnation at all. If our hearts condemn us not, then we have our petition. See, yeah. we know. But if sin is in our heart and it condemns us, we, we just might as well not even start. That's right. You've got to get free from sin. And the only way you can get free from sin is get in Him. That's the only covering there is for sin is Christ. Remember, the covenant blood, the covenant blood is not recognized without the token. You cannot, you will not. You say, well, I, I've been sanctified from things. That's not the token. It's the Spirit is the token. Amen. The Spirit of Christ upon you. Believe it. Now, look. The Word assures us of the promise. All these are texts I've said out here. Just keep on preaching all day. Look like, see all this. See? The Word assures us of the promise because it is the promise. Yes. Amen. The Word is the promise, and the Word is the God, and the Word is, is ours, and we become the Word, and the Word becomes us. If you abide me and my Word and you, then see, well, this becomes one great big family. See, it assures us because why? Well, what's part of us? Amen. See? Amen. See? See? It becomes part of us. What a text. All right. Assures us the promise. The token is a sign that the purchase has been made Amen. and been accepted. Now, you can't get the token from the railroad fair until you pay the price. And the only way you go to pay the price is pay it. <laughs> That's right. What? Believe it. Accept it. Full obedience to the whole word of God will entitle you to the token. Amen. Uh, Amen. Full obedience. Not the part of it. As far as your denomination goes. But all of it. Full obedience to the word which is Christ brings you into Christ. Now what if you just all in but your feet hanging out? What if it's all in with hands hanging out? Most all of us in, but the heart hanging out. See? Yeah, see? Right. The heart's in the world yet, see? But we don't do that. Full, complete obedience puts you in the word one. Amen. You believe it every bit. Amen. And all of it's in you. And you watch it working through you. You don't go about with a bunch of carrying on. Amen. See? You're a Christian. No matter what anybody says, they'll never touch you. You're in Christ. You're as safe as you can be. When death knocks at the door, it has no more. Say, not at all. Why? It's just stepping out of here into there. Age means not a thing. You don't pass from age. You're in eternity. Because you're in Him, He's eternal. Don't mean a thing. Whether you're young, old, middle-aged, or whatever you are. Pretty ugly, short, fat, what? No, man, man. You don't go around and all these other things. You, you don't pass from that. You're dead. Your life is hidden in God through Christ. You're sealed in there by the Holy Ghost, walking in Christ. The only object you see is Christ. Right. That's right. That's all you walk with. Oh, my. No wonder we sing a song, Fill my way every day with love as I walk with a heavenly dove. Let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my, hey, let me be a brother. Let me live the example of what Christ said a man should be. Let me be a brother to a brother, a brother to a sister. Let me be a, a minister to the ministers. Let me be an example of examples. Let me show to the world that this word is Christ. And the only way I can do it is come into Him because I can't do it myself. You can't do it, but let the Word in you become one that it lives itself out. Amen. You are a walking epistle of Jesus Amen. Christ when He's got complete control, control of you to make every word. If He comes this way, I won't do this. And you say, no, no, I don't believe that. See, you're not in the Word yet. That's right. Amen. See? Full. Now watch. 
Fully out. Fully obedience to the whole word of God entitles us to the token. Then, when we pay, pray, we must have the token to present with our prayer. If you say, I pray, Lord, but really I haven't, well, you know, you might as well stop. See, to go ahead first and get the token. That's see, because right. that token is what he'll recognize. See, yes, sir. when we pray, then we must present the token. Lord, I have obeyed you fully. Amen. I've repented of my sins. I feel that you have forgiven me. I've been baptized into the name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is up on me. Now, I have need of certain things for your glory. Lord, I ask for it. It's mine now. Amen. Then it's something anchors back in. Sure. So, then it's all over. It's all over. It's settled. I asked for this. I asked for it. I must have it. See? See? I, I want it for your glory. See? Well, that's, then he just gives it to you. Then you know it's yours. That's where it's our children and so forth. We apply the blood. Believe it. That's all. All right. What does he do then? When you have can present the token with your prayer, it shows that you have fully come to obedience to the whole word of God. When you got the token, it shows that you have obeyed every word, then you and the word are one. You're only asking for the thing that you are. Amen. <laughs> then, well, you know, if I say to this, hand, you obey me. Reach out for that handkerchief. It doesn't. And obeyed me. Why? Well, it's part of me. See? Then when you and the word becomes one, ever promise. Amen. Glory to God. Every promise is yours. Amen. It obeys you. Then you want to watch what you want to do. You would put your hand in fire and just say, see me do it. Oh no, no. See? But if he's something in that fire I got to reach for, he'll obey me. Amen. Uh, that's right. See, you want to watch what you're doing. That's reason. The Holy Spirit sparingly give out and things. You know what I mean? Because some you don't want to, a real servant of God don't show off with it. You see, that's a, that's making a show. When we pray, we present the token. It shows we have fully obeyed. Paul tells us that the blood speaks. That anyone knows that the blood is actually itself can't speak. It's a chemistry. Is that right? How many knows that? But how many knows that the blood speaks? Amen. If you want to put that down, Genesis 4.10. God said, what about your brother? Said his blood cries from the earth. Amen. 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 Is that right? Amen. His blood's are speaking. Amen. Hallelujah. God said, what about him? He said, I'm not my brother's keeper. said, his blood's crying out. Amen. His blood's are crying out. It's a token. It's a token that he'd been killed. His blood was crying out against him. Uh, you get that in Genesis 4.10. Then in Hebrews 12.24, start reading. In Hebrews 10.12.4, said the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than that. Amen. See, Abel, he was a righteous man. He died. He died innocent because he was in the way. He was in the way standing for the real revelation he had. He spoke his cry out. The justice blood of Abel. Cry out against King. Amen. But the blood of Jesus Christ only cry out. It redeems. Amen. 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 And it speaks better things. It makes you sons and daughters. It hides you from the wrath of God. See, the blood of Abel could not hide Cain. See? But the blood of Jesus can. Amen. Amen. So, oh, Cain, come out today. If you've been a persecutor against the word and say days of miracles is past, this thing's all nonsense and things is crying out. The, the blood of Jesus Christ cries out, but there's forgiveness in it if you just accept it. Wish we could stay a little while on that. See, blood speaketh better things. Believe for safety. Then apply. See, believe for Here's what you want to believe for. See, you want your own safety. You believe for your safety. And then apply the token for the whole family. See? You say, how can I do that? Claim it. If it worked on you, then you and the Word becomes one. Amen. 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 See? See? It works for both of them. You and the Word are one. Then apply it to your children. Apply it to your life, like Rahab did. 
She applied the token to her father. She applied it to her mother. She applied it to her brothers and sisters and got them all in. You apply it and say, Lord, I'm going after my son. I'm going after my daughter. I claim her, Satan. You turn her loose. I'm coming after her. I apply my token. The Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit that lives within me. Catch my daughter there. I'm going to her now with your anointing upon me. You'll do it. Amen. That's what they did in Egypt. That's what they did in Jericho. You want to read another? Acts 16.31. Paul told the centurion, Believe on the message of the hour. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And thy house shall be saved. Amen. that right? Amen. Believe for your house. Bring them all under. Now, you've seen the God of heaven perform a miracle. It's before judgment. You believe it? Yes. What can I do? He said, Rise and be baptized. Paul took him out and baptized him. He said, now believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy and thy house shall be saved. Amen. Believe what? Believe the Lord Jesus Christ for your house. Amen. Apply the token to your house. Then what do you do when you apply it to your house? Move all the trash out. Amen. That's right. Get all the short skirts and Amen. the shorts and the cards and the cigarettes and Amen. televisions and Amen. whatever more and kick them out the door. Amen. You apply the token. Won't stand still for it. Yes, sir. Take it all out. All the dances and parties and rock and roll and old vulgar newspapers and uh, stuff that's of the world. Kick it out the door. They were cleaning up this place around here. Like Jacob did. He said, told his wife and all that to wash your clothes and everything. Put away them gods. Amen. You know what Joshua said before crossing over? He said, wash your clothes. Come out at your wives and so forth and get ready. For within three days we'll cross Jordan. Amen. 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 He's getting ready to apply on their token. <laughs> Amen. That's it. Get ready. Apply it. Believe it. Clean up. Let your children, let your family, let your loved ones see it in you. Amen. That's right. It'll take effect. Yes, sir. Then apply the token in prayer with, with, with consideration, with believing. Apply it with such love and so forth. You know it's going to take it's going to take place. That's all. Apply it in confidence. Believing. It. It's going to help. When you talk to that child, when you talk to your husband, talk to your wife, talk to this loved one, believe that it's going to help us stand there and say, Lord, I've claimed them. They're mine. I'm giving them for you, Lord. Apply it. Create that atmosphere around you that they'll just drop right into it. See? Oh, you are. You are, if you got the token, you create a spirit around you, a power. That when you walk, people know that you're a Christian. They love where you say something to them. They believe your word. What you say, they hold on to it. That's it. Apply the token. Then walk with it. Claim your household. You must do it now. This is evening time. Now you've been listening a long time. Now, this is evening time. It's flying time now. The wrath will strike one of these days. It might be too late then. Yeah. Apply the token with confidence. If you want to read that, read something here. My scripture got wrote down for this. Is read Ephesians 2.12. And if you want to put that down. Notice, in Ephesians 2.12, when you read it, it says this. That we don't serve dead works. Amen. But we serve a living God. Amen. With living works. Amen. Oh, my. With living works, living signs. You believe in living signs? Also put on Hebrews 9, 11, 14, if you want to put that down. Living signs. Living works. Apply that. Not dead creeds. I'll take my boy over to church to see George the church. Some fine Christian boy here. A good friend. Oh, buddy. A real fellow. He, he come down here was baptized. His mother said, I wish you'd have gone to a bigger church if you want to be be baptized. See? See? He just didn't want old dead creeds and things. See? We don't serve dead creeds and dead gods. We serve a living God whose blood was shed back there and the token's been applied to us that we live also. Yes, sir. Don't serve some dead creeds. They even deny such things as the token. They say the days of miracles is past. There's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why join something like that? See? Don't do that. Apply the token. Then serve the living God for living works, living signs. 
Signs that heal the sick, raise the dead, foretell things, speak in tongues, interpretate every time perfectly right. Prophesies and says this and such a thing I happen. Show signs in the heaven above and on earth. Signs and wonders. Amen. Speaking exactly what the Bible said it take place. Serve the living God. Apply the token. Don't go to them churches and join them on dead works and things like that. Because they don't even believe in such things as signs. But we who believe. Amen. Know that they say there's no such a thing as a sign. That Oh, oh that's nonsense. What they talk about up there, that's crazy. Why well, there's no such a thing? Why you women, or you, you, why you don't watch your dressing? It does. The Bible says. So. Watch your hair. Have it. The Bible says. So. That, that's just the difference. It's, touch not, handle not, taste not. He's God. See? Now it does mean something. Now they think it's crazy, but to us who believe and know the truth, we know it is His living presence, for it does the same things that He did when He was here on earth. Amen. 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 All they say they just imagine they see that pillar of fire. Oh no, oh no, we don't imagine that. They thought Paul imagined it too. Yeah. Egypt thought Israel imagined it, but it take them to the promised land. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. We don't. Hebrews thirteen eight. You know, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and forever. Putting that down, see that He's the same. It, it, you know, they same some imagination. When I write this, your scriptures are right out here, and I know where the scriptures are, and that's how I go to it. See, no, it is His living presence. For he does the same in this spirit. Now, if it done went off into some creed or denomination, we know right quick it wasn't Christ. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. If I led you into some creed or something other, I'd be sent from some denomination. Yeah. But I'm not bringing you creeds. Now, I'm not teaching you denominations. Amen. I'm teaching you the word of God, yeah. which is the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ yeah. manifested. Amen. Not only for me, but for whosoever will. Amen. Amen. That you, you are my brother. I'm not a great person. You're a little person. We're all little persons in God. Amen. We're his little children. We know nothing. What we really ought to know. He lets us know as he will. Amen. And we are thankful to him for what we do know of his blessings. And I don't share this by myself. I want to share it with you. See, I want you into it. I want you to receive this token. And if you haven't done it, many of you, most of you has already done it. But if some of you hasn't done it, See, I'm talking on tape too, you understand. And many of it, and I don't say here in the church, we are all come out, suppose, but there may be thousands times thousands who hear the tape, you see. And that it's a ministry. There'd be somebody slip into Jericho, you know, with a tape. So we want to we want to catch that predestinated seed when it goes in there, see, called the wrath is coming. Know that it is a presence of the living God. Proves that God has raised him up according to his promised word. A little while and the world won't see me no more. Jericho, Egypt. They won't see me no more. Yet ye shall see me. For I, I, the personal pronoun is always referred to. I be with you. I am the token. My resurrection is the token. The works that I do will identify you. Will identify me in you. As it was in the days of of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man yes. when the evening message goes forth. For it shall be light about the evening time. Yes. Just about the evening time, the light will come on. Oh, glory to God. Makes me feel like I could run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah. It Amen. shall be light about the evening time. <laughs> That's right. The prophet said so. Amen. Now I'll be with you. I'll be in the Luther age. I'll be in the Wesleyan age. I'll be in the Pentecostal age. But it right at the evening time, It'll come light. The denominations will fade away. And then the Amen. token will be applied. And all these, it's honest and heart down through that. Without without you, they won't be, may be made perfect. But in you, it's like the head has to go to take the foot. The head has to go to take the hand. The head has to go to take the heart. The head has to go to take the mouth. See, the head has to go. And now we're at the time where the token was applied on the lintel of the door. See, and on the post. And then when I see the blood being a token, I'll pass over you. I'll hurry now, just as quickly as I can now. Just about five more minutes or ten, we'll be done. Proves that God raised him up from the dead. You believe it? Amen. He's living among us today. And that I is Christ, and that I is with us to the end of the, that says consummation, which means the end of the world. Amen. Be the end of the world. According to his promised word. He promised it. 
And the works that I do shall you also. It's not nonsense to us. It's the token. It's the token. We accept this sacred blood sacrifice. We accept his sacrifice blood. Then give it gives us the life, the token, a seal of his promise. Ephesians 4.30 says, Grieve not the blood. No. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Whereby ye are coveted. Put away. Forget me. Uh, you are coveted. You are a token. The Holy Spirit will be the seal. On anything sealed inside of a seal, you better not break it. Can't break it. You, not God's seal. No. For you are grieved not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Amen. When the body's raised up, it's a seed, a sign that the seed has been germatized with eternal life, Zoe, my own life, and I'll raise it up again at the last day. And as you walk, you have confidence that the life of Christ is in you and you are in him. By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body and sealed there by the Holy Ghost among us believers like this until the day that Jesus rises up. Oh, apply the token. That's what it means to us. We expect this sacrifice to give us life, and it does. And it gives us a token, and we apply the token, which is the seal, and to being, being partakers of this. What a great thing it is. Being partakers, baptized by this one spirit into that one myst, mythical body. Did I say that word right? Mythical, mystic, mystic body? Mystic body of Jesus Christ. See, the Holy Spirit said, you're saying that wrong. A dummy like me, but he said, you're saying that wrong. I call it mythical, which is mystic body of Jesus Christ. See? The mystic body of Jesus Christ. I don't, we don't need an education. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's the one. He's the one. Amen. That one might have stumbled somebody somewhere, some educator. And I hope he gets it right. <laughs> the mystic body. It'll be for something because he wouldn't have said that. He's right here now. He's right here at the pulpit. He's right out there. It's Him. And in Him is no death. In Him is no sorrow. In Him is no weary. In Him is no sin. In Him is no sickness. In Him is no death. We are in Him. Amen. If Satan tries to hand you something like sickness, just take your token and apply it. Oh my. Take your token and apply it that you are a purchased product of Jesus Christ. Amen. The token stands that your fare is paid. Amen. He says, when you die, you're lost. So you're wrong. Yeah. I have the purchase product. I am the purchase product. I have the token. What is the token? He knows what to do. Don't fool him. He knows what it is. I might talk to some of these preachers. They'd argue. Not Satan. He knows better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he come against it two or three times. You know, and made a mistake. <laughs> of temptation. Satan knows what you're talking about. Just show that token. He'll fly. That's because it, what is it? It's a seal product. Amen. Right. He can't break that open and give something there that's not right. Amen. Say, take your hands off. Right. I'm sealed. Amen. Oh, my. A sealed product. Yes, sir. You are purchased. Hold the token over your unmovable faith in his promise. Watch him go. The affectional, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. See? Take that token. That's what it's for. Satan's there to tempt you. He is in Egypt to tempt. Well, you know that when Rahab put that harlot, that, the harlot put that string down, that uh, string, I imagine some of them shoulders laughed and made fun to that crazy old woman up there. Yeah. She's off of her head. Look, her got her dad. <laughs> what did you ever hear of such? What well, Dr. Jones said down here, they nothing to do that. Yeah. But there was. Yeah. Because a messenger from God brought the message and told him. Yeah. Could you imagine the Egyptians say, look, look at that crazy bunch of holy rollers. Yeah. Putting blood. 
<laughs> Won't they have a mess to wash that off now? Oh, my. That big fine homes. Oh, covered over with blood. Oh, such a stink. I bet you that'll be hard in a few days. It don't mean a thing. You know why? Uh, Holy Father so-and-so said so. But there was. Right. It did mean something. It does mean something to us who believe. Just remember, your unmovable faith that you got in this word. Now you're not Eve no more. Amen. You're not one of these doubters and uh, well compromising with Satan. You hold every word of God. See, Eve said, well, the Lord said so. Satan said, but you know, the Lord surely won't do a thing like that to a nice person like you. Oh, you're so lovely. He will. Oh, yes, he will do. He said he'd do it. Well, my father was a minister. I've been a minister. I, I can't help it. Without the token, you're lost. The wrath is up on you. That's all. Without the token. He, he said he'd do it, and he'll do it. That's, that just settles it, and he says he'll do it. Oh, I believe the days of America. Yeah, but he said it wasn't. I'm the same yesterday, day, and forever. That's, that's just what he proves to me. Now, to us, we know it. To them, they don't believe it. But we do believe it. We know it's the truth, see? Now, being in that, we become part of the Word. And then take the token, the Spirit, over the promise. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Uh, now get ready for the healing service tonight. Take the token. Hang it over the Word. On your unmovable faith in that Word. Amen. He'll get out. Amen. That's, that's the thing Amen. he puts him out. Because in him, there's no such. Wish I could testify a little bit now. There's some things I've seen happen just the last few weeks. See? Oh, what I could testify. You know, Luke said, if all Jesus done would be putting books, uh, there wasn't enough books in the world to write them. Just what I've seen in my own ministry, seen him done. You couldn't pile the volumes on this platform here. I wrote it in details, what I've seen him do. Just in my own ministry. Seen him do it. See? He had more success in my ministry than he did in his own. <laughs> now remember, he had more success than I. Not me. He had. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah! He had more success in Jeffersonville than he did in Nazareth. He did. And that wicked city and this wicked city. Amen. Glory! Because he could perform no miracles there. But he did here. Amen. He finally broke to here. He got it done here. He might have to get people somewhere else. But he got it done. <laughs> so he had more success right here than he did in, in uh, Capernaum or, or in Nazareth. And that. He done more miracles right here in this tabernacle than he did in the entire ministry Amen. on earth. That's right. He did it. Now what about the rest of the world? Oh my. Now that's what he done. I remember he done. Now, they don't say that I done, you know, because I didn't do it. I just didn't, I just loved him. He just submitted myself to him and said what he said. And the Holy Spirit went to the other people. And they believed what he said. And then he done the work. That's all. Yeah, he can get all of us believing it. What would he do right now if he get all of us believing it right now? Right? Amen. Amen. There wouldn't be a feeble person around the country. That's Amen. right. If he could get everybody to believe it, it all be over. See? Hold your token over your unmovable faith and his promised word. And Satan will go. Now, I am going to close now. God once gave another token to the world. It was a rainbow. Remember that? Amen. Yeah. He ever, ever remained true to that token. Because he gave it for a token. All these thousands of years, he never has failed to display that token. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Why? He honors it. Amen. He gave it. He gave the world a token that he'd no more destroy the world with the flood. And he's ever, ever, since that day, displayed his some elements in the air that makes that rainbow. When it rains and the sun comes out, that shows. The sun dries up the rain. So he put the rainbow there to prove that there'd never be enough water fall on earth to destroy it again. That's his covenant. It's a token. He said, I'll give it to you for a token. He honored his token. He honored his token in the days of Noah. He shows it yet. He honored his token in Egypt. He honored it in Jericho. He honors it today. He ever honors his token. When it's displayed. All these thousands of years, he has loved to display that token. He never forgets it. He don't forget his token. 
And no matter how much the world changes, the rainbow is still there. Amen. He honors the token. So does he now. He honors his token. No matter how much the church changes, how much it does this, God still honors his token, not only. Shows us he never fails to honor what he does and what he says. We accept, uh, we, we respect that. I do. He expects us also to display his token over our faith to Satan and all his unbelieving cults and denominations that we believe that his promise is true and he'll do what he promised to do. Amen. Praise God. There's the church. No wonder you can't get the first base out there, as we call it. Excuse the expression. No wonder they don't get no word but go back to a denomination and make a bunch of dressed up, polished up people. Intellectual, ed educated, never get any work. Because that's what they display. I am Methodist. I am Presbyterian. That's all they are. But believers take the token. And what Jesus began to do in Galilee, he continues to do now through his display of a token of the Holy Spirit back upon the church. Amen. For it was not the acts of the apostles, it was the acts of the Holy Ghost in the apostles. Amen. And that was a token. They said they had to take heed to Peter and James, as they, uh, Peter and John, as they passed through the gate called Beautiful, Seeing they were ignorant, they might have said, hey, tote, tap, that's scary. I'll tell you about this. They, they might have all kinds of grammar that they couldn't understand. They might not have known the difference, all the uh, all the mathematics of the scripture, but they had to notice they'd been with Jesus. Amen. They could display that token because the same spirit that was up on him before his crucifixion was up on them after the resurrection. Amen. 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 That makes him Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's how we know he lives. Because, why? How do we know we live? Because he lives. Amen. And because we know we live, it's because we're like him. Amen. And we are in him. And he said, because I live, you live also. I am he, in Revelations, that was dead and alive forevermore. And if if we die to ourselves and become alive in Him, we're alive forevermore. Amen. And then His life in us is just like a life in anything else. It displays what He was. And that makes Him the same yesterday and forever. Now how can you want to deny that? Don't you see dead works serve the living God by the eternal, I mean the everlasting covenant of the life that was in the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, going on to the end, I, well, I will stop. Displaying the token of his grace, his love. Now, without this token applied, now it is a token. What is a token? The token is a sign of a debt being paid. A price required has been paid. The price of our salvation was death. See? And no one could pay it but Christ, and not the, the spirit of a denomination, not the spirit of a pope, not the spirit of some man or some saint, but the spirit of Jesus Christ of all the church is a token that the debt has been paid and he's met every requirement that God required and we and him are one. Amen. That day you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father me, I and you and you and me. Uh, apply the token. Apply the token of his resurrection. That because he was raised up for our justification, he has raised us also with him. And now we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus under the fellowship of the token. As Israel sat there and the screams is going on out the street, they didn't have one thing to worry about. Only thing is to be sure that blood the token was shown. That's the only thing we have to worry right now. There's trouble in a, in a way of making friends. It ain't going to be long. Trouble striking. You know that. Amen. Be sure the token showing. And the token is the Holy Spirit. For by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body and made partakers of his glory. On our la home march now to the promised land. 
Do you love him? Amen. Uh, you believe the token? Amen. How many would like to say, oh, Brother Branham, pray for me that I will come under this token. Let us bow our head. Lord Jesus, most gracious one, when the world was in sin and no one could help, God in mercy, foreshowing by a type that there was coming a token that could take away sin, not just cover it, but could take it away. And Jesus came in the right time. And he shed the blood, his own life, taking, making us an atonement for our sins. And then presenting him back in the form of the Holy Ghost. Which is now a token that's to be kept to the church until he comes. For the apostle Peter said, the promise isn't to you and to your children. And to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Lord, by your grace, your help, I claim everyone that hears this message. I claim them for God. I pray thee, Lord, both here this morning and those that will hear on tape. And if there be a seed anywhere that's predestinated, Lord, to hear the word of this last day. May they come now sweetly and humbly and lay their trophies down at the cross or their self as a trophy of the grace of God that's called them. And may they be filled with the Holy Spirit and display the token of the life of Jesus Christ in his resurrection as long as they remain here on earth. Granted, Lord, these words, Lord, I may not have said them right, and if I didn't, I pray that the Holy Ghost will take those words and present them the way that they should be presented. That the people will understand and know without malice and let them know that love is corrective and that they might know that it's because of the hour that we're living in and the close coming of the Lord and we see the great red lights are flashing all over the world that the time is at hand. May the people receive the Holy Ghost this day. I pray and present them to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And let it be a token to us as long as we live, which you promised it would be. It'd be easy to ask that because you promised it would be. And I know it will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now with our bowed heads, gentlemen. With faith believing. I have prayed for you. All I know how. I, I pray with sincerity. With all I know how to pray for it. Look. I realize. That you know what. It's your tithe and offerings that I live by. It's your support here at the church. That I have somebody to preach to. It's your love and your amens and your fellowship and your kind words amongst out in the world there where you go to, to different states across the nation. It's your words that helps take the message. It's you. We are partners in this with Christ. We are brothers and sisters. And he is our king. And I love you. I, 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 where I am, I want you to be. I drive across the nation to speak to you a couple of times. I long to meet with you here on Sunday morning. I love you. I've always loved you. Sometimes I have to speak real harsh, but it's only corrective. You see, it just, it's because I love you. See? And I don't want you to miss it. You, you mustn't do that. Now, just sweetly and humbly, with all that's in your heart, way down deep, just accept it. Say, Lord Jesus, right now, just take all that's in me that's unlike you. And let me move all my pride all that's in me out, all the trash, all the unbelief that's in me, I, I, I discard it now. I just kick it out and let the sweet Holy Spirit of God, like a dove, move down in me. I, I want to live eternally, Lord, and I, I want you to help me at this time. Grant it now. While you pray, and we're going to hum this song or sing it lowly together, I love him. And you remember, it comes by love. For he is love. While I'm holding my hands over these handkerchiefs. Because the people might get them before the night. 
messengers of Jericho, I'll go to every person that I can and see if I can get them to come under the blood covenant, under the blood of the Lamb, that they might receive the token. See, the blood cleanses. The Spirit is a token that the blood's been applied. See, the Spirit is the token that the blood has been applied. Until the blood's applied, the, the Spirit cannot come. But when the blood is applied, then the Spirit is a token sent it back to you that your faith in the blood has been accepted. Your fares paid. Your fares paid. It's all over. The case is closed. You're a Christian. You are a believer. Christ is in you. And you're in Christ. First love and purchase my salvation all down your hearts bowed now before God your pastor brother Neville for these closing words what he's going to say remember the services tonight healing service come early Let's begin at 7. Let me on a platform at 7.30. Is that all right? That's fine. Right. Now we're going to have communion to see tonight. Come. This afternoon, stay right with it. Don't let this message depart. Amen. Remember, never let this message depart. Amen. The blood shall be a token. 
that the life has been given, see? And when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. The Holy Spirit is a token that the blood has been applied to your heart, and it's the token that the blood has been applied. If it never has been applied, then the token won't come. You understand? Say amen. 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 The blood must be applied and then the token comes. It is a token that the blood of redemption has been applied and your fare is paid. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.